no one is calling an ambulance. No. No one's doing anything. No one's like running. Hey, so they didn't a shot. stop the merry-go-round, Sean. <laughs> it's probably it, the carney who's running it is probably just like fucking drunk assholes again. God. It's like, yeah, you probably got your fingers caught, didn't you? That's <laughs> why you're you. bleeding. God, I'm not stopping it. <laughs> not stopping this again. People paid for it. I'm not stopping it. The guy who gets on, he's like, I'm I'm going. I'm going on the merry-go-round. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm staying. I'm finished by God. Like looking at the looking at the dead kid as he's like, <laughs> 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 what? He's got a cute tooth. The head turns. Oh shit! Oh, <laughs> Is that kid okay? <laughs> Wait, it's like, well, we'll see when we come back around. <laughs> he's got like a sippy cup and a pretzel. He's like, <laughs> like, oh shit. <laughs> Well, hello and welcome to the Confused Breakfast. Do you remember the pure joy of a trip to the video rental store as a kid? I do! It's hard to beat the ease of the modern era in streaming platforms where you don't even have to leave your house, but there was something truly special about heading to Blockbuster after finally capturing the man who killed your son, picking out a movie by hand, and watching it with your wife when you get home in hopes of rekindling your marriage. We've all been there. On this podcast, we revisit and dissect some of our favorite childhood movies from that magical era to see if they still move us the way they did as kids. My name is Mike Schulte. Joining me, as always, two dudes who dress up like Halloween to let the ghouls get in their pants. Sean Pryor and AJ Vens, how the heck are you? Interesting way to take that. Um, that's, that's true for Sean. Yep. And that's, I don't dress up as a ghoul. No, you dress se. up like Halloween like so the Halloween. ghouls get in your pants. Oh. Oh. You know what they say? You dress up like Halloween, the ghouls are going to get in your pants. That's what mm-hmm. they say. I've heard so many people say that. 100%. It is I think it's same. like an old wives' tale or something. Yeah. Like a, It's like a myth. I think that's how Halloween, you know, <clears throat> Samhain, you know, the, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the ancient tradition. I think that was how that started. Was, it was an old woman's mm, name, Samhain, who got in people's. And she, she gets she, it. Yeah. <laughs> she, would, she ghouled up in those pants. Yeah, man. Gotcha. This is going well, guys. It well, is. on today's episode, <clears throat> we discuss the 11th high highest grossing film of 1997. Fucking right. A movie that quite possibly fires more bullets than any movie we've done on this podcast in the last four years. Yes. Woo. A movie that taught us all that the only way to fire said bullet is while diving through the air. Woo. A movie that finally validates the spelling of Sean's name. <laughs> We officially bring Nick Cage to May of Sways Uncaged as we are, of course, talking Go. about 1997's Go. Face Off. Well, damn, dang it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for another nostalgic journey to the past with the Confused Breakfast. Sit back, relax, and enjoy wherever you are in the world. Take it away, boys. We worship thee, O Nick Cage. We light this candle in symbolism of your talent, your specialness, and everything you've brought to the world. And we honor thee in hopes that you will Honor us with more movies for the rest of our life. Amen. Amen, Nicholas Cage. Amen. Cold, cold, cold. Amen. We have lit the ceremonial Nicholas Cage candle, which we intended Amen. to do a long time ago, and we never did. And <laughs> Thank you uh, to my friend Allie for getting that for me for Christmas. And uh, every time we do a Nick Cage movie, obviously that will be lit. Yep. So. And if you would like to send us... Uh, a candle of another actor, right? If Perhaps you s- our Mount Rushmore. For, yeah, if you send us a candle of an actor to our PO box, which is in the notes, put your name there. Whatever movie you would like us to do, we will put on the calendar. Absolutely, putting it that way. Yeah. If you are new to the podcast, we're going to be reviewing this movie scene by scene with a modern That's eye. But me. what we do is we talk about it with nostalgia first. What was the first time we saw it? What our thoughts were? What we loved about the movie? What the rating was as kids? Sean, let's start with you. Tell us the first time you saw this mm. and all that fun stuff. This had to have been a TBS, TNT sort of special. Um, I, I I think that this movie was on like in syndication, to be honest, with, oh, yeah. with TNT, one of those stations. But uh, anytime this movie is on, I would watch it. He's here. And I would... <laughs> <laughs> He's like, thank you for lighting me. Um, I don't know. It, it, it was just a... a, a 
incredibly fun time, and I think I'd probably watch it with my friend Jordan, too, on VHS down in his basement. Um, just a, a wonderful, fun time. Did not really know what I was watching, to be honest, but I knew that uh, you know when they eventually show Nick Cage with his face off, <laughs> off. <laughs> that it scared me. Um, so I do remember that. But I have to say back then, this was just a movie, so I'm going to go five. Yep, just a movie. AJ, how about you, man? This was a movie that I constantly confused with another movie with a similar cover to it called Broken Arrow. Oh, hey. oh my God, thank you. I was <laughs> trying to figure out. I, th- I thought this was Broken Arrow. For I, a second. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, you're right. You all, like, uh, every time somebody says Broken Arrow, I was like, oh, yeah, the Nick, Nick Cage, John Travolta <laughs> flick. And they're like, they're like no, just... It's like oh the Kevin Bacon movie. So, so no. you mean you mean face off, uh, face off? Oh oh yeah, you, you mean <laughs> you mean what? Gleaming the cube and fucking John Travolta, <laughs> whatever. Uh, what's his name? Christian Slater. Christian right? Slater. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. They're Christian Slater and Nicholas Cage should just do a movie together and get it over <laughs> with. Anyways, um, no, I, I I always confuse this. This is this is movies in the era of my brother Bob and I watching movies together, and it was there was a lot of. There was this. There was this. You're right, Sean. There was a syndication era when this movie was just going around the network world. I swear, and and they were just trying to push it as hard as they can. I don't know. I didn't really get it. I think Bob really liked it. I think Bob just really liked Broken Arrow, and he wanted it to be this. <laughs> but that being said, this was just like a movie to me. I was like, I guess so. Is is John Travolta the bad guy then? No, it's Nick Cage is a bad guy, but he's the one. He's the nice guy. No, I know, but he's actually the bad guy. He's actually John Travolta. So, who's the good guy? And that's where I left yeah. off. It and doesn't that's matter. Where, There's a helicopter and a plane doing uh, chicken right now. So just and watch. And doves flow f- fly by. Yes. In a gunfight, yep. and that's all we needed from John Woo. So. That's all I could say. That's where the movie lost me. I didn't know who the good guy was or who the bad guy was. <laughs> Dude, I can totally see how that would be extremely confusing. So, to yeah. Think. So I'll go ahead and I'll give this a 5.5. Well, it doesn't hold a candle <laughs> to Broken Arrow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Mike. So, boys, on this one, if you remember, because uh, we'll get to it here later. Actually, we'll get to it next week about what Nick Cage means to us in the numbers portion of this but sure. if you go back in time you listen to may of uh bay on cage last year mm. you'll remember that not many of the nick cage movies had i seen and i think i described it as like a you know i just didn't get nick cage I, like the rock was for me but there as i was, I was like i don't know about that nick cage guy i have never seen face off oh, i'm so excited oh, and, i'm so excited and i don't know why i always thought it was broken arrow but i've never seen broken arrow either you know but yeah. i like for some reason when these came out i was just like that those aren't for me yeah and, and maybe somebody told me a bad thing about it or whatever where i just never decided to watch these the, these movies are essentially that's three doors down and creed albums for me it, <laughs> they're, off, they're the same thing face off is a nickelback but, right yeah you we know, we know it. We know it, but we're not going to listen it to it any better if I tried. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I'm an NA, believe it or not, and also believe it or not, above that, of all our executive producers, no one wanted this. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's mind blowing to me that that nobody was like oh face off that's my movie. What are you so, talking about? I know. So we as a as a group nostalgically, this is a five point two five. Shame on <laughs> you guys. Somebody said no. <laughs> somebody was like somebody's like nah. You know what? I'll take the outsiders over that. I think yeah. you know, or I'll take National Treasure over face off. You guys are whatever. <laughs> But anyway, 5.25 is pretty low. That's going to tie it with Grumpy Old Men and Rocky for us nostalgically. <laughs> but we know where those movies ended up, so we're going to find out where Face Off ends up with a modern day rating. In order to start doing that, we have to talk about it with a modern eye. So Sean's going to get the important details of the movie for us. What do you got, bro? Produced by Terrence Chang, David Permute, Barry Osborne, Christopher Godsick, and Michael Douglas. Written by Michael Collery and Mike Werb. Uh, Mike Werb also did The Mask with Jim Carrey. Cinematography by Oliver Wood. Don't Go in the House. Die Hard 2. Bogus Adventure. Rudy. Born Identity. And Step Brothers. He yeah. also did the cinematography for. Music by John Powell. He also did Shrek, Rat Race, Drumline, and AJ, Chill Factor. 
What's that? <laughs> that Directed. Was, don't ever do Nick, that. That again. was Nick Cage's face being put on. Okay. Yep. Can we not do that again? Please? Yeah. <laughs> Directed by John Woo. Uh, he also did Hard Boiled, Hard Target, oh, a lot of hard. Uh, <laughs> Mission Impossible 2, and most recently, Silent Night with uh, Guy. Nice. Cast, Nicolas Cage, John Travolta, Joan Allen, Alessandro Nivola, Gina Gershon, Nick Cassavetes, Colm Fuhrer, John Carroll Lynch, CCH Pounder, Robert Wisdom, Margaret Cho, Matt Ross, Dominique Swain, Tommy Flanagan, and Thomas Jane. The original story for Face Off was a spec script from writing duo Michael Collery and Mike Werb. Inspired by the film White Heat and a real-life event that happened to their friend in a hang gliding accident, which the injury required surgeons to remove their face for reconstructive purposes and then put it back on. The script was also a response to this, the success of Die Hard. Everyone wanted to do Die Hard. Mm. Originally, uh, the film was going to take place all in a prison, uh, giving a new moniker to its Die Hard butt, uh, w- with this movie, Die Hard Butt in a Prison. Mm. The script also had more of a sci-fi bend to it. Uh, like when we when we get to the uh, magnetic boots, it was like the whole script is pretty much all. Oh, like we'll that. talk about the boots. <laughs> you bet. And how great of a idea that is, and how it hasn't <laughs> been implemented yet. <laughs> Initially, the film was almost bought by Warner Brothers and Joel Silver. Joel! Their time ran out with uh, their time ran out, however, and uh, they dem- they wanted to do Demolition Man being their main focus for an action movie. So Paramount Pictures bought it instead. Rob Cohen, <clears throat> who brought the Fast and Furious movies to the world, was a producer for Paramount and almost directed Face Off, but chose to make Dragonheart instead. John Woo was hired, for the, was hired to helm the project because he's, well, fucking awesome. That's Sylvester cool. Stallone, uh-huh. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Harrison Ford, Michael Douglas, Alec Baldwin, and Bruce Willis were considered for the two main roles, and Johnny Depp was really into the doing the film until he read the script. Guess he didn't like it. Too highbrow. Pers- <laughs> principal photography began, and uh, brow, yeah, you get it. face lip. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, principal <clears throat> photography began, and shooting the film was a giant undertaking, but with director John Woo again being fucking awesome and having a seemingly unending wealth of ideas, the film was in the uh, was in the two main actors' words, a blast. John Travolta and Nick Cage both loved working with each other, and Travolta said that Cage had a more challenging part than him, stating that Cage is a very specific eccentric person, so it was not, it was not an easy task, but fun to fall into his mannerisms. Cage watched Travolta films like Michael and Phenomenon and uh, Look Who's Talking to get inspiration <laughs> for his performance. Uh, He's just an everyday kind of guy. I just don't get it. <laughs> The baby talks. Uh, why is the baby talking? <laughs> uh, well, it's very interesting. It's, uh, What's his motivation? <laughs> Put the bunny. Yeah. <laughs> Shooting ended April 1st, <laughs> and Face Off was released on June 27th, 1997. A very fast turnaround for such a big film, but that was credited to director John Woo, who, while shooting, was editing the film in his head. So when it came to uh, the edit, he already had a good idea for the construction of the story. On a budget of eighty million, the film made two hundred and forty-five point seven million worldwide, and there has been talks of a direct sequel with director Adam Wingard to helmet. No kidding. Yeah, Adam Wingard, the uh, uh, Lord of the Rings, Godzilla. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, he did the new Godzilla <laughs> movie uh, and the guest. Cool. Uh, the Blair Witch remake, which sucks, but still a good director. Re- uh, real quick, you know, obviously this movie Face Off has. John Travolta, Nick Cage. That is how we know it. Those are the two iconic people that face off. But I did oh. read that there were some other pairs of people that they that they are they had imagined that could play these two people. I want to know which one you would prefer out of all these. You've got Michael Douglas and Harrison Ford. You've got Bruce Willis and Alec Baldwin. You've got Jean Claude Van Damme and Steven Seagal. Denzel Washington, Wes- Washington, Wesley Snipes, and Robert De Niro, Al Pacino. Think of those pairs. Every uh, single one of them. I, uh, I, do, I want to see an alternate universe where that happened. So I'll give you my real answer after my gotta, ha- gotta fucking have it answer uh, is... Van Damme Seagal. Van Damme Seagal. Yes. Uh, yeah, I need, I need to see Van Damme become that. <laughs> Van Damme acting as Seagal. As Seagal. <laughs> That's and impossible. <laughs> I think the most interesting one, though, would probably... Well, well wait, hold on. You had another one? Denzel and I, Snipes. 
that might be the funnest one to I think watch awesome. them to watch them become the other person. True. I think Denzel being that's that's as as interesting as Travolta becoming Cage of of freaking Denzel becoming Wesley Snipes. Yeah, that's a, a level of crazy. That's awesome. I think the one I, I think don't Demolition want Man. is De Niro and Pacino because they're basically uh, the same. They're person. basically the yeah. same guy. Like <laughs> I, you get them confused regardless. So exactly. If you if you put glasses on both those guys and made them like sh- shave the same goatee, they're the same guy. Yeah, you I know. do, however, want to see them work with John Woo. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> two, okay. Them. Two patient actors in like a high action, mostly yes m- motivated director. Realistically, I think uh, who was it? Harrison Ford and uh, Harrison Ford Michael and Douglas. Michael, Michael Douglas. Douglas. That'd be cool too. That would that would actually if there if it wasn't these guys, that would be a very legit like fugitive style yes. movie. Like yeah, to be honest. Well, just a friendly reminder: if you love this podcast, you want to support us. This is always going to be free. Here's your three ways to do it. Number one. Support the sponsors. We got sponsors of these episodes. We genuinely like these companies. Use the promo codes. Get stuff from them. That helps us out. Number two, directly sponsor us at patreon.com slash confusedbreakfast. That's how you get more Confused Breakfast in your life. Voting on upcoming episodes. Giving modern day ratings. Feedback on the movies we do. Bonus audio episodes. Private watch parties. Private Discord channel. And number three, the easiest one, hit the share icon. Send this episode. You and your brother, you and your sister, you and your dad. You love this movie face off. Send it to him. Say you got to listen to these guys talk about it. That's all we ask. Here you go. Reason, thank you. Up next, we got to go to AJ. He does the research for us, gives us the ratings and reviews of critics and fans alike. This is going to be shitty. I know the critics hated this one. I could eat it. I could eat a tomato for hours. Mm. The, the tomato, tomato eater. <laughs> Gross. Good one, man. Thanks, man. Yeah, dude. Ninety-three uh, percent. Nine certified feet. fresh the critics the critics roger ebert said this is the best movie oh i've ever seen my god look at this movie this is amazing you not, guys he said. not even citizen kane watches every day roger ebert can deny the power of face off listen mm. to this uh the critics think that face off is the exact same movie as terminator 2 raiders of the lost ark Tied in 23rd position of any movie we've done. You're welcome. Inarguable. 93% certified fresh. The audiences are like, okay, take a step back. (laughs) It's 82%. That's what they said. They're like, which it's like, okay, I guess that's more reasonable. But 82% from our general consensus is you put them together and that's that's where they should be. So, okay. Um, I had the, uh, the IMDb listed and then I didn't. It's 7.3. It's, uh, 7.3 7.3 on IMDb, guys. <laughs> I said it first. <laughs> edit that out. Okay. Seven. Don't edit that out. That's <laughs> that's getting to be a crowded rating for us. Of any movie yeah. we've done, it includes Big Karate Kid, Point Break, Dumb and Dumber, Starship Troopers, Election, and many more. Mm. There you go. All 7.3s. That's what they say. Um, I found some uh, some some good. This was one of my favorite critic reviews. Uh, you know what? I'll I'll go back. I'll I'll go back to that one. Roger Ebert gave it a seventy-five. I think I honestly think they're just like it's John Woo. We can't like dog on him. <laughs> they all got together in like the critics like Fortress of Solitude, and they're just like we can't dog on John Woo. It's, I know, I know, I know. But okay, well let's do it. Or, or is this happened before in the opposite where th- they are all like no one else is gonna like this, so I want to be the one to give John Woo like the best rating, right? But they all thought that, <laughs> and they all gave a very high rating. They're like, damn it, we should have talked about this. <laughs> <laughs> they all, all gave it pretty much 75 uh, out of 100. Roger Ebert said, the high-tech stuff is flawlessly done, but the intriguing elements of the movie involve the performances. Ron Wells said uh, from Phil Film Threat said, okay, the premise may be a little hard to take, but there's plenty of good writing here anyways. One of my favorite things, I'll take this kind of final excerpt from uh, Brian Rowe. He was out in, he was in InSessionFilm.com, InSessionFilm.com. Uh, this is the final paragraph that he had. It said, since Face Off was never part of a franchise, it might not have had the staying power throughout the decades like The Lost World, Jurassic Park, or Men in Black, but it made its mark on the action genre in a major way in 1997, receiving terrific reviews from critics, an Oscar nomination, and nearly $250 million worldwide. Richard Corliss of the Times said that Face Off isn't just a thrill ride, it's a rocket into the thrilling past. When, director, when directors could scare you with how much emotion they packed into a movie. 
I feel this sentiment holds true to this day. The movie more than just is more than just pure spectacle. The tremendous cast and engaging story putting face off uh, a couple notches above your typical 1990s action fair. That was in 2023. Okay. However, the audience said, hey, take a step back here, okay? Um, I want to say, how about a <laughs> one out of ten? They kind of address us. Uh, how about their heights? <laughs> <laughs> Kira GD, uh, 2009 and 2022, said, warning, spoilers. It's a terrible sci-fi movie. John Travolta, very tall, full-bodied <laughs> guy. On the other hand, Nicolas Cage is slim and a short guy when it's compared to Travolta. The plot is one of the most silliest thing, plots ever. Let's say nobody noticed, nobody noticed the height and nobody noticed the differences. How about his wife? Nobody, nobody. noticed the differences. They shaved down his heels. He's been working so hard for the last couple of years that she doesn't even know what he looks like. Yeah. yeah. It's true. He, he's almost a new man every time he comes home. Yep. She hasn't seen that piece in literally months. Yeah. Says it in her, in her diary. Uh, over the top, one out of ten. Terrible film, only enjoyable as a comedy. Dialogue so bad. Uh, how was it ever written? Over the top action with super corny slow motion. A plot so dumb and unbelievable, uh, unbelievably stupid. Watch it for the over the top acting. It's hilarious. Usually, how it's written is someone sits down at like maybe a computer or a typewriter or something like that, or okay. maybe maybe even like long pen and hands. paper. Yeah, pen and paper. And they, uh, and they just uh, write words uh, in, in like paragraph form or whatever to like tell a story. That's usually how it's written. Cool, cool. Oh, just, just okay. yeah, I'm the more technical you guy on the show. New every day. So yeah, it's All called right. stuff you should know, and now you know. Yep. Now you know. Dun, bin, dun, dun, dun. What a woo! This is a ten out of ten. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is Archie Gatto, 2023. I still remember watching this movie as if it were yesterday, 1997. Till this day, the movie is still doing the things that make th that make things good. <laughs> still doing the things that make things good. <laughs> it makes life better. This is what this is what we call action. Capital entertainment, end to end staff. The details of the movie are aren't ain't complicated. Ain't complicated. Sorry. I mean, the staff put together a remarkable effort in making the movie. I'm uh, these are all um, these are all commas, guys. <laughs> I mean, the staff a remarkable movie, comma. I'm take, I'm talking the, from choreography, comma, selection of sound, comma, choosing the movie characters, period. <laughs> I, I don't want to lie. I cannot falter you anywhere. I wa I have watched the movie more than twenty times, if not more, but still find it interesting. One day. My grandchildren will watch this movie and they will be like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> to all the staff that took part, I salute you. <laughs> staff. 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 <laughs> staff. I think staff in, in, in <laughs> says that like you didn't get paid. I think that's kind of what staff yeah. is. They, they volunteered. That was a volunteer staff. I only wanted to say one more thing here, um, and this is a one out of ten. So bad, it's good. Uh, no, it isn't. Said... <laughs> <laughs> uh uh. <laughs> said, said Steve and Karen. <laughs> 77517. What happens in your marriage that you not only have a joint Facebook account, but a joint IMDb <laughs> account, guys? What is going on here? They have, they have a public figure account on Facebook. <laughs> Steve and Karen. Basically, the. Potentially the two worst people that we know in the internet world uh, <laughs> did say this was a one out of ten. I don't need to read everything. I think that tells us everything we need to know. This is a film that's hung around for years waiting for me to watch it on a boring Saturday e evening when there's nothing else on and you start searching your fire stick choices. Oh, they have a fire stick. Ugh. Ugh. You guys don't have fire stick, do you? Roku no. stick. Roku. Roku? Okay. Uh-oh. Ooh. Logan. Oh, well, there you go. So <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I should have waited another 20 years to avoid it. It's probably the worst film I've ever watched. And two hours plus is even more hard going. Let's face it. Nicolas Cage has to be, parentheses, and seems to appear on everyone's list of worst actor ever, Sean. No. 
and it must be a wrench for the Coppola family. Coppola? Coppola? Coppola. Cop- Coppola? <laughs> We're doing Coppola. this again? Capicola. <laughs> Capicola family. <laughs> Gabagool. <laughs> to add him in the fold. Maron. Also, Travolta was, was, was feted for greater things after his return to the big screen in Pulp Fiction. But sadly, this is one choice he should have turned down. You're going to tell me you sit down on a Saturday night, say it's raining out. You're not going to do anything outside. There's no one else doing anything. And you and your wife, fucking Karen, are sitting down and you watch Face Off and you're not turned on. Yeah. yeah Sexless. It, we already know this <laughs> well, the, by having a joint IMDb movie review. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. If, yeah. If yeah. Sexless. If, you're, if, you're, if your IMDb account is together, you're not together no, in the bed. Not Got actually. <laughs> so... Last thing that they did say, I wanted to just make sure. Uh, Caster Troy, I'll just jump this out. Caster Troy, try an overdose overdose of Caster Oil for the same uh. effect of what this celluloid dog with fleas produces. How about it, guys? Do we have little about? We do. Do you want me to read it? Please and thank. Obviously, you. if you want to join our patreoncom slash breakfast, there is a tier where you get to give us your thoughts on the upcoming movie, and we can read them on air. We got Jarrett Layoff. He's got a couple thoughts about this movie. He says, Welcome to the late 90s where action was king, and the movies lasted 35 to 40 minutes longer than they should have. (laughs) Did it keep me enthralled throughout the entire two hours and 18-minute runtime? Nope. It had me for about one hour and 40 minutes, but it was great for that time. I enjoyed the movie mostly because I was able to ask myself, WWCBT, what would Confuse Breakfast think? (laughs) Nutty. We need that shirt. We do. Nutty, a little obnoxious, but fuck yeah, dude. I'll watch it again. 6.9 out of 10 is what he is saying. So if you want to get your thoughts on there as well and support this podcast, go join patreon.com slash confused breakfast. Thank you, Jarrett. Right on. Well, boys, before we get going into a scene by scene review of this movie, perhaps a message to our listeners. Okay. You are all now the property of the Confused Breakfast podcast. Citizens of nowhere. Yeah. The Geneva Convention is void here yeah. at this podcast. Amnesty International doesn't know we exist. Yeah. When I say your ass belongs to us, I mean exactly that. Yeah. But that's why you're here, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Here we go. Here mm. we go. So scene one, FBI special agent Sean Archer survives an assassination attempt by a terrorist named Castor Troy, but the bullet kills Sean's son. Six years later, Archer is still chasing Troy and culminates at an airport ambush of Troy and his brother Pollux, who has just placed a massive bomb somewhere in L.A. that will go off in a few days. During the conflict, Troy is knocked into a coma. Pollux, in custody, refuses to reveal its location. Archer is attempting to reconnect with his family when he learns about the bomb. You can't beat this cold open. Say it again for the people in the back. You can't beat this cold open. Is it because the movie's called Face Off and we start right on they're with people's faces? Off. And yeah. they're and they're just there. Dude, why does Nick Cage not have a mustache All in the time. anything <laughs> else in the rest of his life? Because he looks fucking awesome. Um, and he's, he takes hey, a little on. sippy drink. We, oh, dude. Raising Arizona. Yeah. You, you I know, know, I know, yeah. but you know what I mean. This I, is older version yeah, of him. Yeah, true. Apparently, that's a John Woo thing he wanted to do. I think, I think that um, uh, Chow Yun Fat was actually supposed to be in this movie to some degree, and I think he had just come off of a role or something. But I think that was a he. I'm pretty sure it was John Woo who said he wanted Nick Cage to have a mustache at some point and to casually sip out of a soft drink. Dude, <laughs> can we just say like he had to go and get fast food before like. <laughs> He had to go had, through a drive through Or who, who knows the what fair. the hell this fair thing yeah. is. Like, he yeah. might have stopped for some cotton candy. He and... stopped for one of those, like, those, like, lemonades. Yes. Lemon, like, with the lemon in it and stuff. Oh, I, oh, I love oh. them. He, he was on his way to commit murder. And he was like, oh, I love those lemonades. I'm going to get one. That's what that guy did. <laughs> but it's perfect for his character, You're 100% too, right. As we find out later on, like, he is just so unhinged that, like, our first introduction to him is like, why does he have a lemonade? <laughs> But it, it makes him like a, that much more unhinged other than murdering a kid. This movie murders a kid. They in within five minutes yes. of the starting of the movie. The only thing that could frustrate you more as a watcher of this movie, like in the in the first literally five minutes, they murder it they murder a child and take out John Travolta. Could have severed John Travolta's spine. He could, may have never danced again. Yeah. <laughs> but then the only thing that could have made it worse is if he would have been like <laughs> 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 the fucking 
straw before he pulls that trigger. Shakes his eyes. Yeah. <laughs> like that's what that's the noise that makes when you when you get, don't have any liquid down. You got yeah, it, guys. Yeah, yeah. That's the only thing else. Now that being said, guys, I I I'll I'll take the I'll take the dramatic moment of if I was holding my son and I got shot and then he was dead, I would go scorched earth. This wouldn't even be a movie to be made. It would just be an all out kill fest. Oh, you're another child probably in my way and I got to go and kill the caster Troy guy. Yeah. You're probably going to die too because <laughs> everyone would just be, I would just only see red at this well, point. Well then let, let me play devil's advocate there. Let's say I was trying to kill you. Yeah. And I had you in my sights. I yep. had a really great sniper rifle, and I shot you. Yep. But instead, I accidentally killed your son, and you were then now lying there. Instead of going around in circle on the merry ground, now you're just right there. I would then shoot you. Right. I finish would, the job. I would You'd just. It up. I would just shoot you. What? What? Because you see him. He's going to see him scrambling around, being like trying and trying to hold his son, like he yes. did. What? So that's what. I, is weird about this movie like something I, I accept it for what it is sure but he should have just killed him there or they're trying to imply that like he actually did have a little humanity and heart in the fact that he did kill his son right when in I, the, or or who cares like when in that who, aspect too like you could just then, say there's you know uh put him out of his misery kind of thing too i was gonna where say it's like he's you know if you got humanity and heart and you're sitting there, then and that's what just happened, then yeah, then just put me out of my misery. Also, Correct. That's it. I, there you go. That's like, it. I, I do agree with you. He's so now not, it's very unhumane. He's going to make him live with it. For a crazy guy who's wanting to kill his arch nemesis, uh, named Sean Archer. Sean Archer. Uh, he only brought one bullet. One that's bullet. That's weird. <laughs> but like no one. He nobody, traded his other bullets for he's, a lemonade. He's on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> this bullet's for him. Ooh, lemonade. It's like I've got one left and it's just for you. No, it's not. I'll take him. Did, do you read? Okay, so well, like. One, one, yeah, one one thing. Sorry. Like no one is calling an ambulance. No. Oh. No one's doing anything. No one's like running. Hey, they didn't a shot. stop the merry-go-round, Sean. <laughs> they were just like, oh, there's shit. a there's oh. a merry-go-round outside our building right now, and like, yeah. I don't think anything stops that. No, I think it just no. keeps going. You're, you're probably. Going, I waited in line. I waited in line for this. I paid my money. I'm riding. It also. I don't care if that kid dies. <laughs> might depend on who's like. It's probably it, the carney who's running it is probably just like fucking drunk assholes again. God, <laughs> it's like yeah, you probably got your fingers caught, didn't you? That's <laughs> why you're bleeding. You. God, I'm not stopping it. <laughs> Not stopping this again. People paid for it. I'm not stopping it. The guy who gets on, he's like, I'm, I'm going, I'm going on the merry ground. I'm, 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 I'm staying. I'm finished by God. Like looking at the, <laughs> looking at the dead kid as he's like, <laughs> <laughs> what? what? He's gotta keep doing the head turn. <laughs> oh shit. Oh, <laughs> Is that kid okay? <laughs> Wait, it's like, well, we'll see when we come back around. <laughs> see, like, he's got like, a sippy cup and a pretzel. And it's like, <laughs> he's like, oh, shit. <laughs> I, I do got to ask you, though, do they ever say why these two are quarreling? Like, why is he trying to kill him? No, I think it's literally just... We, there, there are arch, okay. We you, have good guy and bad guy. You have you have rock meet hard place. You have a movable <laughs> object meet meet uh, unstoppable force. That's what you have here. It's it's really a tale as old as time. So I don't know I don't know how they number one decided that this was should be in the script and then number two decided to pull it out. But apparently in the original script, John Woo intended that Caster Troy and Sean Archer were romantically involved with each other. Hell yeah, dude. And Sean's unwillingness to let their love be known became the catalyst for him to kill. Wow. And uh, the producers were worried that American audiences would be confused by that and find the characters less sympathetic. Well, maybe it's, it's a good thing that they're just... We don't have homophobic people in those positions anymore. Congratulations. But that is canon now. They are, yes. they they are lovers. lovers. They yep. were. This is canon. And, I have. Uh, you know, the ultimate act of being together is, you know, sexual intimacy. Yeah. What's more intimate than just switching each other's faces? In yeah. that, oh. In that, ooh, wow. In oh. that way, I really want like to know what it's like to be you. Sorry. That Sean Archer was an undercover and he went undercover and did everything it took to get Caster Troy. And then like foiled his whole operation, and then found out that they were they were romantically involved at one point. But then he found out that Sean Archer was in fact police, and that's why. Now, well, 
Be brave. Just do it. We did it. We wrote, we wrote, we wrote in, uh, an opening to this movie. Speaking yep. of sex, which we love on this show, Fuck yeah, uh, this the new segment where we say the porn title for the movie that we're oh, doing. Yeah. Do you have any guesses of what the porn title would be for Face Off? Come face, get off. Um. Um. <laughs> that was so fast. Yeah. He's been thinking about it. <laughs> From what I can tell, the... Facial off. <laughs> The one from what I can tell, it's not as good. There's going to be better ones. Fuck off. <laughs> there will be better ones coming forward. But from what I can tell, the one on this one is called Pants Off. Pants Off. <laughs> Instead of Face Off. So that's, that's all I got for this. That's the new segment. It's called Porn, Porn, Porn. <laughs> Gets our algorithm going. Uh, okay, then listen. It's our algorithm. Then we, we move on to. The top one's Fuck Off. Fuck uh, off. Well, <laughs> that's too that's too obvious. Too obvious. Come on, low hanging fruit. Listen. If, oh, hey, that'd be good. If you don't like if you don't like Nick Cage, I understand why. Yeah. If you like Nick Cage, I understand why. And I think it is all summed up both sides of this when he is the priest. A hundred percent. I I think that when you love him, this is where you're like, that's my man. I love Nick Cage. And I think when you hate him, you're also going. What is this guy doing? How is he popular? How does he get movie roles? I love it. Okay. I love this, dude. But I, I understand the people out there that are like, he's not good. I'm I'll so say, torn, I'll, guys. I'll say that I understand, but I don't. But <laughs> give me your reasoning. No, I'm, I am. I'm just, I'm so torn on the matter, to be completely honest. Like, there are parts that I'll get, we'll get into it later and I'll ask you guys a question, but there's the point of, I like that, I like, John Travolta trying to be Nick Cage <laughs> rather than just watching Nick Cage be Nick Cage at some points of this. Because I do, I think there are parts that I guess you just have to get in with it. I just guess, I there guess you just have to commit. You have to submit. There are some right? that are too far for me. Yeah. Like, somebody should have said, hey, bro, th- yeah. not that. No, bring that back just a little bit. Yeah. And we'll talk about it. But the, him dancing as the priest while they're singing. It's peak Nick Cage, man. Like you, you look up any like... You just look up Nick Cage on YouTube, and this scene will just yep. show up as as like the number one thing to watch. Yeah, um, this is like this is the reason why I love him, and this is the reason why I think that he is doing something as an actor that no one else is even gonna come close to thinking of doing. And I've seen interviews with him, and he's like, I love Ger- German expressionism, like movies like Metropolis or like Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, like these silent movies where they have to really play up, like they're they're doing a play on stage but on film. And he is just going not even a hundred percent; he's going a hundred and seventy five percent, maybe with more, the world and taking it taking it really far. And I really think, like you can you can think that this is bad or like you can have the opinion that yeah, yeah. you think this is bad. But I do think that when they pull this switch on you, which we'll get to obviously when they do do the face switch, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like, whoa, mm-hmm. you know, like <laughs> we could have gotten cage in this performance throughout the whole movie, which I would have been fine with. But I really think this, I guess, juxtaposition yes. of switching this up and calming him down. No, you're Deshaun, you're right, because they, they make him go so over the top, which makes Travolta. I hate Travolta. I hate Archer. Oh. Archer sucks. Is he's it, such a sad... He's vanilla. The yeah, actual he's such a, character? Yes. Okay. He's such a sad sack of shit to where that's Tra- Travolta's talent, too, by the yeah. way, because I rem- I'm watching this for the first time going, geez, Travolta, like... Yikes, man, you're getting out acted here. You know, like that's what I was thinking. But then you realize you're like, oh, no, he's just playing a sad sack of shit that you're supposed to not like. I don't like Archer. I I mean, I I know we're kind of supposed to, but I'm just like, I don't like this guy. I don't know. I, I think that's the biggest thing, though. I don't know if you're supposed to like him to some degree. There, sure. I, f- I honestly feel like there's something you're not really supposed to necessarily love him or feel like he's your hero in this movie. I really don't feel no. that in any in any sense. And then uh, I think watching Cage, we do have to get him unhinged to the point that we really have to probably dislike him as well. So maybe yeah. there maybe that's the genius of this, especially in this beginning of watching them be honestly just two people we don't really like. <laughs> And then it's kind at of a fun switch. Ends of the spectrum. Yeah, at opposite ends of the spectrum. And then and then it's kind of a fun switch. It's come up, it's way more fun to watch them beat each other, you know, <laughs> yes. I, to a degree. It so is. I'm sure we'll talk more about that later. But yeah, I just 
I don't know. And, and him, it's it's Castor Troy and his uh, and his brother Pollux have such a weird relationship. I don't know. No, don't don't let me skip over this. That that chorus conductor would be like, "Excuse me, father, what the fuck well, are you doing?" They, anybody would have known <laughs> that that wasn't a real priest because it was a young girl, not a young boy. You know what I mean? Like, so everybody should have known that. Oh my! You know? <laughs> All right. That's why everybody everybody should have been like, "Hey, this guy's pretending like he's a priest." I Look like at sleep Mike. deprived Mike. Look at him go. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> slept in thirty two hours, you guys. And I have stories about my upbringing uh, and priests that I was around. So uh, let's talk okay. about that, that later. sucks. <laughs> yep. Uh. Anyway, but it's really funny when he grabs her ass. Yeah. Dude, but you're absolutely right. Like This is like a 14-year-old girl. <laughs> it, it, it is. <laughs> father, we're, we're trying to conduct... Father? Father? He's, no. <sighs> fa- fa- are you... A- and then I... Did you just come? I, I immediately thought of Sean when he just goes and just does the freaking head. <laughs> or does it? Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> it, it is unhinged to the best degree, but yeah, if you guys have anything to add on that, no. but I was going to talk about uh, him and Pollux. Let's talk about Pollux, man. Uh, why don't you just hit the button? Okay, shall we hit the button? It's right Please. here. It's this one. Hit it! If we were on a train to go punch a face, yeah. I'm on board. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. It's Pollux. Is it's it? 100% Pollux for me. I can't even stand... I don't know if this guy's doing a character. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't get it, Sean. I don't get what he's doing. He's talking like this. <laughs> I read that he's talking he... like the, the Monopoly guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, I did read something that he saw a performance that he kind of started to mimic it after. And, uh, and it wasn't, this wasn't a direction for him to be this way. It was his creative choice. I think even to the reluctance a little bit of John Woo, if okay. I remember correctly. But I'll just put that out there. To be know. kind of like, I guess, an Igor yeah. kind of character to Dr. Frankenstein, you know? I, I get that, maybe, but there's there's just too much about it that I really fucking hate. And it, it sucks, because I his that's uh, Alessandro... Um, Navarro? Navarro. N- Nivola. 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 He, I like him in a lot of stuff, and that's what's that's what's kind of weird about this, is like it's, somebody just didn't... Give them the right direction in this, or, think, or reel them in, because. But but maybe that's what they wanted. Maybe they literally wanted us to hate his fucking guts. And I really do, and it works. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. I can't wait till he dies. And, and especially be awesome. stand up to be this Nick Nicholas Cage character's brother. You know, to at least kind of battle for your screen time a little bit. Yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe that's the way he felt in the end. But the I I do think that the one thing if if we're gonna talk if we can talk about their things and then like John Travolta's things. Him tying the shoe for his younger brother is way more like intriguing than doing this constantly. Yep. I, whatever the hell that is. Can I just punch whatever face had this done to it? <laughs> yep. Because I think that's what I want. Or punch the hand that does it. Yeah. 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 Punch that's the hand that does it. Sorry. Yeah. Do they ever really like? They just do that, and they never even go. Well, of course. Like, there's no juxtaposition. Or sorry. Uh, Whatever that goes. Well, honey, you know we always touch each other's face because after Michael died, that right. was our sign of love. Like they no. don't, they don't ever explain that. No. Right? He does it to Michael on the Mario go, Mary go round yeah. too, and it's like death kiss, man. Literally, at one point, uh, Alicia asked me, "It's like, so is, do they have? Is like one of them blind or like?" <laughs> <laughs> hey. Right here. I was like, <laughs> hey, hey I, was like here. I was like, well, no. That's <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Maybe. I guess maybe. I don't know. I mean, have you seen the daughter's makeup? We maybe she is. I was going to say, we haven't met the daughter, and she did her own makeup today. <laughs> so <laughs> you got to talk about it. Well, is that your guys' punchable face? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think it's it's what I have. The and only other one uh, was the, um, was was well, yeah, in the hand that, that does the touch. But uh, the, the, bl- uh, the bald brother. He was also kind yeah. of a punchable for me. Oh, I believe yeah. actually Jarrett Layoff b- said that in his uh, yeah. Little Lebowski Urban Chew. I, I think he called it Baldy McBalderson. Or Baldy McBalderson. Like Thank you, Jarrett. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he, yeah. he's, punch- he's a punchable face. He, yeah. And we're here anyway in this scene. Ooh, so. here's a prop. I'm taking it before you guys. I want the dragon money clip. Oh, nice. That gold call. dragon. It's that, not going to fit in my pocket or anything, it, but it's something you kind of just carry around in open air. You that, know, like <laughs> you, you just kind of walk. You kind of walk around with it because it's it's not practical. To you fit can't your, put it in a pocket, but it looks cool. <laughs> shit, because yeah. it's a mouth that clamps the money. <laughs> <laughs> that's why he has a little treasure box that's carried around for him because he can't put anything in his pockets. 
He can't put that in his Correct. pocket. Yeah. yeah, you're right. You're not even in the it. 90s with Jinkos. <laughs> Can you imagine, you well, imagine if, if Nicolas Cage was wearing Jinkos in this? Yes. That'd be amazing. Hey, go ahead, As John. impractically as it was for me to skate in Jinkos anyway, it, when I fell, <laughs> it would just like crush my thigh as it's in my pocket. It, oh, if yeah. I could get it in there. Yeah. Um, I was going to go his just whole entire case of things. Okay. But then uh, I, I wrote down like three props and I didn't realize that I was doing that. Yep. Until I got to this one, and it's the ultimate one. It's Nick Cage's face. It's his face, yeah. You can't have a face I'm for a prize. A face. I'm putting it on one of those little styrofoam things. What if you just wear it? Well, he actually got it. It's that one right up there. <laughs> oh, there it is. Yeah. Funny enough, that's what it would actually look like. It's been rotting. rotting people's faces off. I know. I was... Uh, I Mother was, face. Hmm. <laughs> uh, I, want, I want the uh, the bullet... From John Travolta's chest. Cool. Yeah. Okay. There it is. <laughs> nice, man. That's great. So there you go. Well thought out. That's that's what I want. And <laughs> well, well the one I did think out was and yeah. into the kid. Oh Ooh. shoot. <laughs> so, it went through him. Shoot, literally. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I'll backtrack a little bit. No, you the know what? They, they <laughs> I want <laughs> I want the love handles they trim off of John Travolta. <laughs> nice. There we go. So nice. Okay, want. you got it, man. Just a bag of flesh. <laughs> I was just trying for a piece of John Travolta, guys. Let me have it. This, this, see, guys, this, this movie, what I noticed about this movie is that it just, <laughs> it's like Fight Club. That's yes, it. exactly. Great, exactly uh, what I was thinking. Great, great song, song title, by the way. Fuck yeah. Song. No, guys, as a person who watched this for the first time, yeah. I'm just... I'm just blown away by how fast this is mm -hmm. and how just nonstop awesome this is for the first 20, 30 minutes. Like we're getting all these scenes and these funny parts. And then now we're eating a peach for hours and we're on the plane. And this poor FBI lady that literally the last moments of her life oh. were sucking Caster Troy's tongue and pretending like she liked it. And they're, they're going to fuck, right? Oh yeah! Like this is this what what kind of world of private jets? It does the stewardess just fuck you? I don't oh. think that happens. Are, are we to are that level sure yet? Are we have we gotten to that? I think we're at the airport at this point, aren't we? No, I'm no, I'm saying like as a podcast, as a podcast. like a huge worldwide podcast. Are we to oh. private jet fuck plane yet? No, I don't think I don't anyone think gets so. those. Oh, okay. I think you have to bring your own your own fuck person on there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't, is that uh, right, Logan? Uh, yeah. are, we, are we getting that right? That, that's an official title. Okay. Have, uh, hey, person. hey, we need we got two more seats. <laughs> Let's make them fuck persons. <laughs> we got to fill this thing down for the proper way. The weight. stewardess cannot be incapacitated yeah. with a fuck because we need drinks that's and right. we need and we need to be brought. Food I need more like peaches. Yeah, yeah. So so uh, as Pollux being a brother, ready to watch his brother fuck a stewardess. Oh, this like, isn't the first. He time. should he should be mad because he's like, well, how am I going to get my drinks? Yeah, true. Well, well, and then she, then he's like, w "If if you were to suck my tongue, would you be oh. grateful?" And she's like, "Yeah." And then she does suck his tongue real good, real hard. I feel bad for her. And and when then she dies, but I'm just like, "Well, she did die gratefully." Yeah, Gr gratefully. Yeah, she was she was grateful for the opportunity she had. It yeah. makes me wonder. And so the way that they do kind of play up Caster Troy, it does make me kind of think. It makes me wonder a little bit if he did have any sort of seduction to the FBI agent lady or or not. And if that's why, but it was such a, that's such a weird thing. The tongue thing. I think they're trying to imply that she actually does kind of like him because he's well, pretty see, cool. See, that's what I'm thinking. Is but, but no, but I think they're trying to imply that. Yeah. Okay. But no. Okay. But and no, she doesn't. Come on. She does not. Let's be real. <laughs> but she was, I'll tell you what, she was another name on that list that, uh, that uh, Sean Archer, uh, not yep. Broken Arrow, apparently, uh, just... Just that he rattles off with that yep. bottle. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, the whole plane chase. Do you, it. It just felt. It felt very Con Air. It felt very much like that. I don't know. I. I. I just. I feel like I didn't need another plane chase well, in my life, guys. <laughs> you're like you're saying this movie's moving really, really fast, and Sean Archer's in that like Humvee with his dudes, right? And I blink my eyes for a fucking second. I'm telling you. A second, and he was in that helicopter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I re I had to rewind it to be like, how, how did, did he get, get in? There? How do you do? You know? Yes. Yeah. I oh, really yeah. don't. Oh no, no, no. He so, jumped. So they they're playing chicken with the airplane. They're the only. Everyone's chasing the plane, but they're somehow the ones coming at it, and they end up stopping them 
the Humvee comes to a stop, to a stop. as the helicopter is landing. It hasn't landed yet. Mm. So he has to wait for the helicopter to then land so that he can then get in the helicopter to then take off. They show him getting into the helicopter. They do. They do. Very barely. <laughs> But like, think about this. And then catching back up. Yes, this plane with four engines. By the way, I've never mm. seen a private jet engine with a private jet with four engines. Takes five minutes to get up to speed to take off. By yeah. the way, and then it, that's enough time for Archer to not only stop his Humvee, get in the helicopter to land, get in, take off to then catch up to the plane with four engines that is running out of runway because it has not taken off. I yet. know you're a helicopter fan. Yeah. Yeah, but like I'm not even mad. That's what's no, so weird no, about this movie. Normally, I'm so mad about this stuff, but I'm just like something about the tone of this makes. And I think I'll explain to you why later. Why I think, but I'm not. I would normally be so mad about this, and I'm not. There's, I love it. It's like there's moving too fast, and then moving fast enough for you to not even have the chance to complain about yeah. it. That you're just like I, I'm. Just I'm. I'm. You're literally along for the ride. Uh, on this, this movie knows exactly what it is. Yep, yeah, it knows and what John, it wants to get to. John Woo knows exactly what the tone of this movie, and it's just fun, pure popcorn bullshit. Yep, and we're just gonna we have eighty million dollars. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna play chicken with a helicopter and an airplane, yeah. and then end the whole thing in a shootout in a airplane hangar. You know, um, with with it basically inventing diving sh- shooting genre. Yeah, like like he basically this is him. This is oh, Wu. Yeah. Like you have to dive to shoot guns, right? It's it's how you unlock. And no one the has feature. to reload. Like you just have to just shoot as many times as you want and dive around. Perfect. It's it's just incredible that I think what I realized though is that the fact that they didn't CGI anything, the fact that all of this was real, mm-hmm. it is all practical. And, yeah. and you go to like an Air Force One, like our episode on Air Force One, like that plane crash at the end. If it just it just it killed the movie for me. <laughs> If they would have done something weird CGI with this airplane crashing into this, the hangar, not yeah. an actual real airplane crashing into a hangar, I would have been taken out immediately. Sure. But I wasn't. I'm like, that's a real plane. Nice job, guys. And that's mm-hmm. I think that's the testament to that that late 90s. Uh, I mean, just 90s in general action flick yeah. genre. You know, the 90s action movie is its own genre to me. And mm-hmm. I think most people... And that's what they did. They did it very well. They, fi- it's like when they finally honed in all the practical effects of explosions, crashes, and all that stuff, and then the budgets just be- probably became too big for it, right? I mean, and then eighty million dollars, and then CGI became a thing, and now that budget's too much though, too. So I don't know. Well, then you get just a shootout after this too, where it's yeah. just like John Woo is just like, yeah, we're not, we don't have. I mean, it's. It's. I'm gonna compare him to Michael Bay, but I think John Woo is uh, abs, uh, obviously more artful with this schlock '90s sort of action. You know, mm. uh, I think he's staging and taking time yep. with his set pieces a lot more than Michael Bay would, where he's like, "No, I don't. I'm I'm tired of that footage. Cut to something else right away." And you, no one delivers. A fucking line like you better pull the trigger because <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Yeah, like Nick Cage, it's amazing that these these are the interactions again where we see them as two guys that we just don't really like for on polar opposites interact with each other, and honestly, it's it's almost frustrating to watch for me because I'm just like I I am at this point that if they don't get to the Faces coming off soon. <laughs> I'm gonna start. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna be lost. Hey, you know? keep in mind that I knew nothing about this movie. I didn't. I knew it was called Face Off, and I thought it was just because they like were fighting oh, each other, facing off. I did not know that they pulled their faces off. Oh my god! So when we get to that, I'm like, what? <laughs> no, literally. Oh my god! Oh, what? That's what we'll call it. <laughs> we'll call face. We're gonna call it. <laughs> hey, we'll put a slash in there so people don't think it's a hockey movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't want this to be in like center line or anything. All right. So scene two in secret, Archer reluctantly undergoes a highly experimental face transplant procedure to take on Caster Troy's face, voice and appearance. Archer as Troy is taken to the same high security prison where Pollux is being held. He manages to convince Pollux that he is Troy and gains information on the bomb's location. Troy unexpectedly awakens from his coma, discovers his face missing. He calls his gang, and they force Dr. Walsh to transplant Archer's face onto him. Troy then kills the only people who know of the transplant. What do you guys know about CCH Pounder? I've seen her in movies. Yep. Good. I'm a big fan of CCH Pounder from The Shield. Okay. And, like, 
I I love playing the her, same character. The <laughs> same character. I love how this is even an option, and I love how how they don't they know that this is what they want to happen, but they don't even come out and say it. Yeah. They're just like, well, you know, you could just let the whole town just fucking blow up, and like that's your fault. That's your you're the one that's it's your fault. Do you think they're like purposely like trying to keep him alive? Oh like, yeah. Oh, because why else would they be keeping him alive? He <laughs> also. As Sean Archer and they they had the shootout or whatever, he is like every time he says get down to like one of his partners, they immediately get killed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course. Like, do you think they're just like sacrificing everyone in order for Cass or Troy to be alive so they can just do this? I oh, I I, I think they really want to fucking do this. Okay, <laughs> it's like you you think you think that no matter what, like regardless of whether or not he even had information that would be prudent. To maybe saving LA. No, they know about it. They 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 okay, know about the I see bomb. What you're saying. Like they're gonna do this at some point, yeah. but this becomes the perfect time. Yeah, this is like a catalyst. <laughs> it's like you know we've got that face off project we've been working on. <laughs> they're gonna pull the plug on our funding if we don't face somebody off right now. Ooh. So we better we better Ooh, cut somebody's face off. Let's fund Caster Troy. Okay. To put a bomb and like we'll fund him. We'll give him all the money Ooh. to put a bomb to blow up the city. But then we know about it, so then we'll then get him get him killed and put into a coma, so that then right, right. we can get Sean Astor to do the face off program, and no matter what, we'll defuse the bomb. Like the bomb's not going to go off, but then we can do our face off program. Dude, we but could do what the if the off. bomb just 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 goes off? No, and we can no, just it write won't. it off. It won't. It, right. I mean, write off L.A. Yeah, like as a tax break. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then we'll then we'll take. Then we'll take New York City and and cut it off and put it back in L.A. after the bomb went off. Yeah, yeah. there's this there's Hans Gruber's brother who's yeah. out there who's also doing a bunch of bullshit. What yeah. the fuck are we talking about? I don't know. What? I, I just <laughs> this think, is America. I just There's think it's it. so funny that they they really want him to do this. It, and by the way, why in the world would you ever think that this is something that you should do? <laughs> why is this a viable option? Why did it become a viable option? Just because you're 3D printing ears doesn't mean that you get to just like cut somebody's face off. <laughs> but you as Sean Astor <laughs> owe nothing. That I'd be like, I'd be like, tell the fucking bomb to go off. I don't give a yeah. fucking shit. Thanks for giving me a nine day head notice. Me and my family are the fuck out of here. We're gonna get out of town. Yeah, because guess what? My guy, and then I'd walk over and go right in the guy's throat in, in Castor Troy's throat, bam, 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 in his chest. Yeah. And then slice the cables going to him and be like, you, yeah, you just go prison rules on on you do. on coma caster yes, over you there, do. and that's it. You're just like da 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 da, and he's done. There, there's no a, world you could make me do this. Ruin Take a pair of pliers and a blowtorch right to his face. Yeah, yeah. There you go. I I just don't I don't understand it either. I don't. We talked about like bad premises and dirty dancing, Mike. And at this point, it's like, <laughs> well, you lived, eaten, ate, and breathed, breathed caster Troy for six years. No one's better for this than you. It's like, look at me. <laughs> Find a guy who looks like him, kinda. <laughs> but, no, and by the way, they, like, it's not like they it. talk. It's not like they have conversations. He doesn't know no. anything about him other than like, yeah, he pulled, he pulled these jobs, and we've been chasing them. And, and they we had think a sexual he, relationship. And they, well, well shit. Wait a minute. <laughs> According to whoa, our canon, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> That changes everything. That's what I'm he saying. He knew him really well. He's yeah. come on that face. He even, he's even like, yeah, our dicks are the same. <laughs> I've seen his dick. Let me tell you, he's wiped that face off. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's been a bit. <laughs> I get it all makes sense now. So so they were fucking and he's wiped semen off of his face. You could say that. <laughs> but now so In now he wants to know what he wants to know what it's like to have semen on his own face. So he has to oh. take he has to take someone else's face. It's the ultimate fetish. Oh my god. <laughs> This makes so much sense. It's like, you know, it's walking my on somebody's shoes. It's like, well, how about you just take his face with gum on it? That's you know, it's like, like come a bunch of strings on someone's face. <laughs> just throw he ropes to know, on the dude. He wants to know what it's like to suck his own dick. So now he can he can take he can take he can he put his face. He cannot do it. He can put he his cannot face. do it. Hey, hey, people say there's sexual tension on this show. Should we <laughs> face swap each other? I, who would, who's got the most similar body type who's here? Got like, the I, I think I'm out of this, guys. No, so you guys I know. Are going. I, it might be me and Sean, I actually. I think me and Sean could face off. <laughs> so I just, yeah. Our I'm wives so. would never know. You just <laughs> know. He <laughs> just... He wants to suck his own... T- I might give out... <laughs> because now he can be like... He can be like, hell yeah, I can see how I look 
when I can do. Oh my god! <laughs> it's like looking in a mirror. Only Caster Troy would like, be up for okay, that. I'm so I'm so sorry for, to anybody out there that feels weird about this. I'm on like I'm 36 hours awake right now. Yeah. So this is what you're gonna get for the rest. <laughs> it's of It's also episode. really funny too. He's like they're showing him the program. He's like, yeah, it's fucking crazy. We just we swapped this guy's ear off, and we're do, we're doing it right now. It's crazy. You walked in just just exactly as we're doing it. Anyway, you want to switch faces with your narc nemesis? Yeah. How about it? You know the person that you hate most in this world that killed your child? You get to now look in the mirror and see him. It's drama. Sounds awesome, doesn't it? <laughs> Think about the person that you just like that you just dislike the most in this world. They didn't even kill somebody close to you. They just killed your vibe one time. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got to swap. His name's Travis. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> cut me off of Travis. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Now you get to now and you get to look at him every morning. I don't want to. And, well, oh, and we're going to change your voice so you sound like him, too. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah. There's no, in no way world, like, does it have, and by the way, he just came home and he just told his wife, like, I did it. It's done. <laughs> He's dead. Everything is going to be fine. I'll do anything you want. Like, I'm back. Like, yeah. I, I talk about a man who finally, he finally got what he Six wanted. Six years later. Six years later. And in any other story, it'd be like, but he still wasn't fulfilled. Revenge is not the same thing as, you know, pe penance or whatever it is. And it's just like, yeah, uh, I've, thank God, huh, he's dead. I feel really good. I feel great about I'm this. I'm going to start fishing, I think. I think I'm going to take up a new hobby and go back home with my wife and do some couples therapy and get my, my family back on the right track. Everything is set right for me now. By the way, we want you to be your arch nemesis. Damn it! Fuck! <laughs> I'll do it. I guess I'll do it. <laughs> and, but this this is fucking wild, by the way. I love this cutting the face off scene. Yes. Like it's really good. Like it's shocking, but it's done well. It's not disgusting it's necessarily. Not disgusting. Yeah, they they shy away from like actual gore as much as they can until they like and they only suggest it here and, and there. And the, yeah. And like later on when they see it in like the reflection of the guy's glasses still or some shit. Nose, that's fine. Um, but it's it's really cool because it's also I've, I've brought it up before but it's like the Tom Savini makeup effect school kind of thing. It's like they're they're showing Nick Cage's dummy on that stretch. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. You I mean, know, but yeah. like show us that get us used to get the audience used to like you know, the, like. the uncanny valley kind of taken away a little bit. Um, I, I like that they're showing that before. Like, they could have just been, you know, like nowadays they would AI this yeah, whole yeah. shit. And it would probably look really good and we wouldn't have any idea, which is scary shit. But, like, doing this practically and, like, literally slicing, I love how they kind of just show the dummy yeah. first before they actually dig in, literally. No, you nailed it, man. Uh, it, yeah, good. No, and, and it's just wild to me, though, that they just, they're just... Flat out be like, don't worry about it. There's technical things just fine. Like <laughs> just basically just slicing around the outside means that you can perfectly peel a face Dude, off. Okay. Nothing's attached in the middle. You're only attached on the outside. Good. Everyone knows my that. years of watching horror movies. Is it just attached like right here? Just on the outside Is of your our face. face literally just hanging off. Our yep. Bones? You can just pull on your face right now and, and you can see how it, it unattaches. It, it That's why facelifts work, man. Yeah, dude. See? Think about that. I mean, but also on. after they cut his face off, they're like, well, now we'll give him a haircut. Yeah. He's got an open wound on his face. I'm pretty sure little pieces of hair just and little, like, like dandruff went <laughs> into his skull. <laughs> just he's just <laughs> just doing the <laughs> I would think that's something you do before you cut the face off, maybe. <laughs> or maybe the new face goes back on and then you do the haircut. But no, we're gonna wait till the face comes off. Well, to get the to get it to get it right, we gotta get that that widow's peak just right. For him, and we can't do that without Caster Troy's face. Yep. So we're gonna do it this way. Yeah. The the the, the digital computer computerizing of all this good. stuff too is is <laughs> yeah. it's just on point nineties. I love it so much. Um, I I I also love that it's it's the, the all we have to do to solve how much these guys don't look alike. Forget bone structure. Forget age, forget anything. Height, right? they're two inches uh, apart in actual real life yeah, height. Yeah. I don't think their eyes did, are the same color. Did they, did they say something about like literally shaving his feet down or something? They said no. In the movie, they said your height's negligible. Like so, it, it's not going to be that big of a difference. In actuality, in in real life, they are. They're like two or three two. inches. Difference. Travolta's like six two and Cage is six. Is he really? Yeah, yeah, Damn. yeah. Good yeah. Good and for him. It's, yeah, I know, right? Yeah. How's he fit in those planes? Uh, right peaches well, that's why they go um, down. Oof. 
So it's a fun joke. We have just all we need though is com- <laughs> nah, nope. Nah, no. Uh, th- we have. <laughs> <laughs> You can't grab it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All we need is computers just to tell us that uh, John Travolta's face went like this to this. <laughs> okay, good. Do. Sounds good. And you're good. And uh, you're done. Please man. don't. Please don't touch your face. It's extremely fragile right now. Immediately, you're just like, ah, oh, got it. <laughs> Fuck you. It's Fuck itching. You. My face itches. It's probably one of those little hair follicles yeah. that just got in there. <laughs> even even that too, like Nick Cage doing "fuck you, fuck you" to everyone is some is he him taking from like a, a like a vaudevillian kind of German expressionism actor who he saw do that in like the movie Metropolis or something like that. Like he's taking all these things. He's like I want to try that in a movie someday, and he just implements it. And like he, I think I, I did read that Nick Cage like ad libbed a lot of his of his really? stuff in this movie, and John Woo was all for it, which is. Just let him go, man. Like you got Nick Cage, you got John Travolta. Let them go Just and let do him the go. thing. Yeah, it, it's uh the what was I gonna say here the the whole the whole premise and the idea right is by the way it's like well hey we need you to just basically take his face that's all you got to do just put his face on okay that's all you got to do oh by the way we're gonna drop you into a max security prison with literally no one else knows about this except for three people in the world. Um, yeah, that's it. That's all you got to do. It's going to be like a couple of days tops, bro. That's nope. all you got to do. Are you kidding me? It like, just keeps getting worse what they're asking. Is yeah. It? And he knows all of this and he still says yes. <sighs> yeah. I don't understand it. I'm just like, thanks for the heads up. I'm, I'm the only man family. that can do this. There's no, no, you're actually not. We could, we got a lot of, we're, this is LA dude. We got some great actors. Uh, that could probably just we'll give them a couple days worth of time, like give them some briefing. They'll kinda, do really actually, good. Actually, you kind of look like John Travolta. Oh, the, the, so <laughs> they're gonna be like, it's gonna be like, I'm the only man that can do this. And then like the person, CCH is gonna like look behind and be like the guy who's getting ready to be prepped <laughs> in actuality. And it's just like, it's just like, yes, you are. Yes, you're the only one who can do this. That's right. Yeah, there's like six, like a lineup of them. They all look exactly like Travolta. They're holding scripts. They're reading. They're like studying their lines. They look like Travolta and not Nicolas Cage. I could eat a peach for hours. I could eat. That's it. That's all you want me to say. All right, number five. Step forward. But but it does. It is played out well. But also in a weird way of when he does get to the prison. Why does why does Pollux Sean, if you walk if you walked in tomorrow and and I saw you and you were looking just like you are and talking like you are, even if you acted weird, I'd be like, well, that's Sean. I mean, he yeah, must just be sure. having a weird day. How in the world does Pollux immediately suspect something is wrong? Yeah, I don't know. I think it's just because Casper Troy is such a like a diabolical piece of shit. Like in everything that he does, like because even like I like how he's like realizing he's like oh I need to fucking go crazy. You oh yeah, he I mean? figures it out. Like he's he's like well I need to start a fight or something and I right. need to, I need to act crazy. I think it's I don't know maybe in like he's around him the whole time he's fucking grew up with him I I, I would imagine maybe just like the one thing is just gonna be like what what's going on with you like. I'm yeah. in prison, man. I'm. <laughs> it's like there. right. He's like before he even says a word to him, he sees him cross the room, and he's like, "That's not my brother." It's true. Like no, it is. It's like he's in, in question. The, if you're believing this movie, he looks. He looks exactly like him. Now. That's what the movie's making. The movie you, ends, yeah. but he's like, "Uh, uh-uh, mm-hmm. ain't my brother." You're like Ooh. my 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 thing is is like you're you're gonna send this guy in to maximum security prison, of like maximum beyond maximum is the way they pretty much describe it with those fucking moon boots um you and, got and, a problem with those. well well I'll, I'll tell you the problem okay. later uh, but <laughs> why don't you just if you if you only needed to tell like all you needed to do is tell like three people the head guard the warden and like somebody else but oh no we can't we because, can't tell them because it's got our face off program <laughs> that we're doing it's like just tell them it's an undercover guy dude how who hard is fuck that cares? who cares hey we have some it, like it is a matter of national security. Literally, a massive bomb is going to destroy the city of your Los family. Angeles. You know how you have a family that lives there. Yeah, they're gonna die. Oh, so what do I need to do? 
oh well then just pretend like this is Castro Troy but also like give him what he needs yeah just just like you know don't don't literally send him through the ringer but like you know when in front of other people make yeah, yeah. sure don't tell your other guards we need you to be in on this so that way it seems legit Don't okay deal. got it it's done that's it that's all you have to do that's why i always hate the like undercover prison storylines it's like just somebody say it <laughs> okay just somebody say it and then you have the castor troy thing or, or with pollux troy and i i don't necessarily agree that oh he's going to be in constant question of his brother unless he knows what kind of pills I used to take. Because <laughs> that information is common knowledge. Unless you're screwing him, you'll never know that. Yeah. It does seem like to me, though, I got the vibe that, like, Caster Troy was, like, Pollux's handler. Or, like... You know, yeah. he it's got his he, like he got his prescriptions for Pollux because he's like so he can't Igor, even tie his shoes. Like he's right. Like he even like has his shoulders lifted like like Igor does. He's like, mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, like that kind of shit. That's a good call. It, I don't he know. would know that. Yeah, it, it's like Pollux has like he's like he's like a savant for bomb making, <laughs> uh, apparently. But that's, that's all he's got going that's for him. <laughs> and that, but but in the end, it, you know, Castro Troy does say it in the very beginning when he sees him at the airport. He's like, if you weren't my brother, I'd kill you. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> so, okay, I guess, yeah. He just he just needs to be a crazy person, and that's how he's going to convince him, I guess. I don't know. And you get to the point now where um, uh, Castro Troy now is waking up, which mm-hmm. just makes no sense again. Why, why are they keeping him alive in the first place? Then how is he now coming back to life after being in a coma? Then without a face, in order to talk without lips in order to smoke cigarettes without lips uh, it's it's just why, like how is he still alive how is it, by the way in his reflection too everyone knows like you can feel your face you don't have a nose it's we've been watching fallout everybody's been right. watching fallout you don't have a nose when your skin goes away right. and the muscles go away but he clearly in his reflection has <laughs> has a nose yeah You're like, yeah they didn't take the nose part okay whatever well, yeah. even with your face off and you're smoking cigarettes, like that thing's got to dry out. Like, Ugh. like you got to be doing like a, a clockwork orange type drip on your face the whole time to oh just keep God. it from like drying out. Just got somebody spritzing you with a bottle constantly. <laughs> yeah. Just <laughs> try everybody at home, try it right now. Pretend that you don't have lips and pretend like you need to smoke a cigarette. It's basically just going to be teeth. You're just going to go, yeah. <sighs> yeah. He could, he could put it in his little nostril. Thing. Oh Visual shit! Nozzle, nozzle holes. Can you do that? Nozzle holes. Have you ever tried that with fuck, a cigarette? Fuck yeah, dude. Damn, dude. Yeah. Hardcore, dude. Yeah, man. Ain't it cool? Yeah. <laughs> so hardcore. <laughs> oh man, I miss smoking. <laughs> God damn. Uh, yeah, but I'll tell you what. I when this happens though, this is when the movie even steps up for me. Yes. When when Travolta now be- gets to become Nick Cage's character. I, this is when I'm finally like, ah, I got it. I see. I see what we were doing there. Right. And Travolta knocks it out of the park. I so agree. I was going to ask you guys, who do you like better, Travolta doing Cage or Cage doing Travolta? I don't know. Really? I really don't know because, like, I obviously I love Nick Cage going crazy as Caster Troy, but then him toning it down a bit and being Sean Archer is really fascinating but then like i it's just i I don't know it's apples and oranges like like them together though i'll watch it every single day Mm. yeah it's i i think travolta like i got found a newfound respect for him yeah man for him to be able to to do that we all think we could be like we could be nick cage i could be crazy like that but now can you though can you really do it in a perfect way to where we believe it and i believe i find at points of this movie i have trouble sometimes being like okay no wait that is that's Nick Cage pretending like Travolta, Travolta you know, like because they're both so good at it. Yeah. I sometimes you have to be like, oh, duh, he's okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. You're acting like a person be, who is acting like another person, technically. So wait, in in theory, in theory, Nick Cage is acting like John Travolta, acting like Nick Cage. Yeah. Yes. Right. As Sean Archer. Okay. So so let's take their names out of it. So so. Caster Troy is is acting like Sean Archer acting like Caster Troy. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. So you do you see what I'm saying? Because and you see here's the thing the thing of it is is uh, this is actually what I would say is that that John Travolta 
or, or, or sorry, Caster. Sean, no, Sean, Sean Archer. Has, Sean Archer. Sean Archer is acting like Caster Troy to, because because now he's in another body. He's in he's, he's in another he's face. in the in another face. Sorry, yeah, yes, yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. But that's what he is. He's acting like that. He is trying to act like Caster Troy, whereas I think that uh, uh, John Travolta or, or <laughs> Caster <laughs> Troy is tr- is. Is Sean Archer now, but he's not necessarily pretending to be Sean Archer. Okay, because he's he's still an unhinged person. True. Right. He's trying to take advantage of being Sean Archer. He's not acting like Sean Archer. He's trying to take advantage of being Sean Archer. Does that make sense? Yes. It's actually that, so. It's, that's actually very complicated because at this point, when he does eventually escape, as we'll get to in the next scene, that now that cover is blown, and so now. Sean Archer in the skin of Caster Troy is acting like Sean Archer now. Yeah. And yeah. it's just so it's fucking It's actually cool. really deep. It, uh, it is. <laughs> like, I mean, it, but like in, in like you were saying, it is uh, John Travolta acting as Nick Cage, acting as Caster Troy. And then vice versa, <laughs> it is Nick Cage acting as John Travolta, acting as Sean Archer. It's, it's yeah. so good. And that's to, that shows the talent of these men yeah, I in, mean, their, in their acting and skills. And the belief of like just writing this fucking craziness and yep. being like, we really made this? This movie exists, <laughs> dude. How did movies, how did movies like, continue after this? Yeah. yeah. How did we get we did any it. more movies? This is it. This is, we just made it. We made the movie. Yep. Yeah. I, I, think it's, I think it's... This is where I actually get to be okay with the movie is getting to watch them beat each other in their own respective ways of their character. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty well done. So AJ, the moon boots. Well, let's, let's move, let's do it in scene three. Okay. Okay. So scene three at the prison, Archer as Troy prepares to tell his colleagues of the location, but is surprised when Troy as Archer appears. Troy as Archer gloats that no one knows of the transplant and that he will take over Archer's life to ruin it before he gets his face back to him. Pollux is freed and Troy as Archer disarms the bomb, becoming a hero. He becomes close with Archer's wife, Eve and daughter, Jamie back at the prison. Archer as Troy escapes after staging a riot. So <laughs> the boots guys, the boots. Did you recognize the boots? Mm-hmm. Cause I wanted to make sure that I was correct before I just decided to say it on this podcast. Those are the same boots from Mario brothers, the movie. And I <laughs> fucking hate it so much. Well, you know, you know that it's clear as day that face off, <sighs> Super Mario Brothers yeah. and Jurassic Park were all in the same universe. And same with The Punisher. And The Punisher, too? Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you about that one later. Oh, well, then add it to this, because oh, well. also in prison, there are some in-gen tanks in the background that say in-gen on them oh. uh, from Jurassic Park. Oh! So, just saying. No kidding. They're, instead of saying that they just reuse props from Super Mario Brothers and Jurassic Park, they're just in the same universe. Yeah, no. And I'll let no, you... Yeah. TikTok, you can figure out how that works in the comments, but they're just in the same universe. Well, so it, figure it out. It doesn't matter. You're wrong if you think the opposite because it is just. Canon. It's canon now. Yeah. What are you? What are you adding in now? <clears throat> the, Punisher. the Punisher. Okay, please add Tom, it in. Thomas Jane's the Punisher, actually. So, uh, so we see Burke Hicks. Yep, is the guy who recognizes Caster Troy when he in goes the prison. in. I believe that he was sent in undercover by another agency <laughs> who also caught wind of this. And that person was actually uh, the Punisher. Who's what's the Punisher's name? Frank really? Castle. Frank Castle sent in by another agency to get close to Caster Troy because cool. they didn't know that Caster Troy is actually Sean Archer. The, the face-off program they didn't know about it. It worked so dang well that they the other agency didn't know about it. Was trying to get close to Caster Troy and Pollux Troy in order to do that. He did not do it, but this is early in his undercover career. Yep. And as we know from the Thomas Jane Punisher movie, Frank Castle was an undercover agent for DEA. And he came through uh, at that. We saw this was one of his earlier undercover operations. Mm -hmm. Then we saw his final undercover operation. And then when his family was killed and murdered... And became the Punisher. Yep, I like it. There it is. That's actually Frank Castle, That's not Burke Hicks. That's fucking yes. awesome. So there you go. Debate that, losers. <laughs> I love that. Eat it. 
Uh, but what random? But weird then, like, if he needed, like, if Daredevil came in and helped, him right, out, he right, would like the yeah. face washing would really help him oh, know, yeah, yeah. know yeah, where he's that's going. That's why. Yeah. yeah, you got it. Yep. What random weirdness, though, <laughs> did we determine that this is like a futuristic world where we have like uh, <laughs> boot electric boots and like, uh, and, like. Just all this, all this whole scene, like the boots, we we could have done without that. Like yeah. th- this doesn't have to be a thing. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I, no, and I get it. I get it. Like, oh, it's kind of a cool thing. Like, yeah, it, yeah. that's for, but like, why? <laughs> it, it, it it wasn't needed other than just like just cause. Like it's we're just gonna do it. Awesome idea. Like I gotta imagine that it was just like John Woo because I I read that he was just an an idea machine. Like on set, he's just like, what if this? What if that? What if this? And like a let like uh, magnetic boots in a prison. Does that just not make the most fucking sense it's in the entire fun. world? Actually, makes a lot of freaking sense. They um, just got electrical current flying through this place, and they're just in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> yeah. It's no big deal. Yeah, it's whatever, no big man. deal. Uh, Water yeah. and electricity. Yeah, that that's that's called um, that's called their their red plan, Mike. If something really goes awry, the last thing they want is to have all these prisoners alive. So they just dunk the thing oh, in the cool. ocean. The floor, just, the floor just opens? Yeah, it just opens up and just floods and electrocutes everyone. So, What was his plan with this electric chair thing? This shock chair? <clears throat> well, like, that's, he said that that's when they take the boots off. Yes, I get it. But, so so he, he, he starts a riot. Uh-huh. He gets his cigarette, yeah. and they're carrying him away, and they, they take him to the, the room where they're basically going to kill him. Joe, Bob, to- Joe Bob Briggs, by the way, uh, uh, last drive-in host, is one of the doctors there. Okay. He's also in Casino. He's a very famous oh, okay. horror, horror yeah. figure for the horror fans out there. So. Uh, well, mm. Jarrett Layoff, Confused Breakfast Actor Database, uh, the important one to talk about. We'll talk about Cage next week. Uh, but John Carroll John Lynch, Carroll. Yeah, this Lynch, is yeah. his fourth one that he's been. Hell he's yeah, moving man. up the charts. Kind of an asshole here. Yeah, uh, but uh, but I mean these <laughs> are the worst good. of the worst. So like I don't care what you do to the prisoners. Yeah, I'm eight to one, it. eight to one population. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. he rules. But for real, like he he knows they're gonna take the boots off him, but he also knows that he's literally going to be killed and turn into a vegetable. Yeah, he's. I mean they're gonna. What do they call? That's like their electric shock, th- shock therapy yeah. for your brain or something. So, so they they put him in this chair. He has no plan other than to resuscitate a man who's now brain dead in a vegetable by just saying words to him. Well, to he, yeah, you're this, right. Like, how did he know that guy was going to be in there? How did he know that he could survive this and still be a functioning person who had strength? Like none of this, none of this should have should have been a plan that actually should have worked. Yeah, see, that's that's the thing. How did he knew Dub- How did he know that Dubinov was going to be in there so he could talk him out? And oh, by the way, and then think Dubinov's just going to forgive me. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, we fried I'll that part of his brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We fried that part of his brain. <laughs> we just, you put a gun in his hand. He's like, "Hey, we're gonna go fuck shit up." He's like, "That's all I know. That's all I want." But I can't talk now. Oh wait. <laughs> Wait now! Now after hearing it for literally years, uh, you didn't just have a you didn't have a threesome with my wife and sister. Uh, I believe you. Cool, <laughs> cool. cool. And, but also, I'll help you escape. Literally, this is Sean Archer, is as yeah. Caster Troy. Yeah. He's just killing people. Oh yeah, he's just killing prison guards. Well, he he stops stops them a couple of times, but then you're like. Yeah, but you just killed like two other guys. Like, yeah. Yeah. It makes no sense. No, Dubinov, don't kill him. But you just killed like three other guards. <laughs> in fact, and they, in fact, you're right. They, they now at the end of this movie now understand what has happened. The government, the, the cops, the FBI. They're yeah, all they're able playing. to now go to go. Oh, wait, that was you in prison. Oh, oh, wait, you you killed a bunch of people. Yeah, that was you. Yeah. You know what? You, you're going to jail. Well, yeah, but you know I had to do that, right? Nope, I nope. don't know about that. I don't know. You could have made it out. You could have done your time. Yeah. And they're playing CNN in prison. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which, well, I guess it makes sense. You got to be equal they're, opportunity. They're crooks, too. So. <laughs> Whoa. Huh? Shot. Got him. Huh? Shot. Shots fired. Yeah, let's go, baby. Huh? 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 <laughs> but also, how did, he, how did he huh? survive? How does he survive this fall into the ocean? That's a long jump. Then how, why do they automatically assume he's doesn't need to be followed or searched for? Uh, he's dead. How? How? <laughs> then why? Uh, water. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's find his body. No, we don't have to. Then we just <laughs> we just decide to just yeah he'll make the hundred mile swim. It's fine. We don't even need to talk. Wait, about did it. they turn on the mag magnets as this riot was starting? 
the magnets got all turned on. And then someone disarmed it? No, 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 no. He got carried away and taken into the room to where then they're going to take his boots off. They take his boots off. Yes, yes. Boots. Boots. Off. Boots off. <laughs> that's a, that's. Yep. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's the basis of this movie. Yeah, this this does get a little ridiculous to me, but I'm still I'm still like it's the same thing. I don't yeah. care. I yeah. don't care. It's just like I would have liked to have just you could have made the plot a little like give me more. Yeah. Like, why did it have to be in the water? It didn't have to be. The whole prison in the water <laughs> thing didn't have to be a thing. It could have just it, been he escaped. It might as well just been Alcatraz. Whoa. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh. Uh-huh. Travel a few miles to get back to LA. Just saying, man. The um the, uh, while all this is going on and, um, you know, Caster Troy as Sean Archer comes back and he says, like, you know, he said all the things. He's like, yeah, I'm going to take your life and bang your wife. And yeah, that's it. Uh, I rhymed. Uh, but through all of that, that's like that's all that Caster Troy even like really cares about at this point is just like. And then, and then the creepy moments when it's his, his daughter then, too. Ugh. Why is she listening to Papa's Got a Brand New Bag? Yeah. It's she's a great not, song. She's not listening to that. She's yeah, not she likes that. that. Did you see what she was wearing the other day? She's not listening to that. She's, no. she's listening to, like, Guar or something and, and <laughs> pretending to like it. Fuck no, it, like, dude. Good Charlotte or something Good Charlotte. Like oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, pretending to like that. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, yeah, Lifestyles of the Rich and the Famous. It's yeah. like, I don't... Like, yeah, they're, they're all... They, they don't even know what it is. It's like... Do you, See the house you live in? What the fuck is wrong with you? God damn it. <laughs> no, I mean, but he, like, at this point, too, this is like before he starts to break out. This is like he's truly stuck. And it, like, it truly feels. I don't like it. Like he's stuck because obviously, uh, Caster Troy is him now. Yep. And there's no way, like, he killed everyone he, who knows he's that fucked. he's in there. And so it's like, holy shit, like he's got to do something really. And so that works for me because it, I, I might kill people to get to at this point. Too. At this point, we're, we're going to do whatever we can. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. You're absolutely right. I do want to take a moment just to talk about some 90s tropes and so, or like, you know, some action movie tropes and um, I'll t- take this back a little bit. The idea that Caster Troy hauls in all these all the people involved conveniently hauls everyone involved in this scheme into it. The three, four people that actually know about it. Right. And then says, ties them up and says, Hey doc, do what you do this procedure to me. That took a team of like an army of 10 people to do, by the way, do this to me or I'm going to kill you. It's like, what if I don't do it to you? Are you going to kill me? Because then no one, then it can't happen to you. Then you're just a faceless man again. Like that's it. These are the premises that I just don't like. I I I have a really hard time getting behind. Do it or I'll kill you. Well then, if you kill me, then you can't get it done anyways. Well then I'll, I'll it's like well then I'll kill your friend or your family. It's like well then I'm really not going to do it because you just pissed me off. <laughs> and now I'm really not going to so do you it. Might as well just kill me now. Yeah. You, so like and then by the way, I I'm gonna guess. I'm I'm not a betting man, but if I had to bet, I'm thinking you're gonna kill me anyways afterwards. Yep. Cause you're caster fucking Troy. That's it. Yep. It's like, yeah, we're not gonna do that. That's it. And then by the way, movie's over. Produced by Dick <laughs> Wolf. That's it. Like it's done. That's it's done, guys. It's so, so silly. Well, let's move on to scene four. So Archer as Troy retreats to Troy's headquarters. He meets Sasha and her son Adam while taking some drugs. Troy as Archer learns of Archer as Troy's escape and hastily assembles a team to raid his headquarters. The raid turns into a bloodbath and many FBI agents and several members of Troy's gang are killed while Archer, Sasha, and Adam are able to escape. Archer's supervisor, director Victor Lazaro, is killed and made to look like a heart attack. Troy as Archer is promoted to acting director. Archer as Troy approaches his wife and convinces her of the face swap by a blood information. It is kind of cool to watch them all start to sort of adapt to their new lives. We talked about yeah. how Archer is, is now like becoming a, basically a bad criminal and killing people and, and escaping and doing drugs that he's never done before and fucking chicks other than his wife and Bang stuff. Chicks. Yeah, but, man. but then you've got like Caster Troy, like sort of really settling into a home life. Like he sleeps <laughs> really well at night. Like he, he gets does. pricked for blood and he's that- just like, 
Yeah, it's a comfy bed, man. That I'm, guy's getting eight to nine hours easy. Yeah, and, yeah. and like actually like protecting his, not his daughter from uh, yeah. Danny Masterson, who's just playing himself. Well, obviously, he's yeah, it, just age, assaulting it women. Like, really well, actually. He, he didn't <laughs> actually know that the cameras were rolling. He was just like, hey, what's up, baby? It was, yeah, a, yeah. It was another moment, actually, that like, <laughs> I was talking about what? She said, well, this part didn't age well in the movie. And I said, yeah, you're right. And then he starts getting the shit beat out of him. I was like, well, that did, though. <laughs> I thought it actually aged very well. Yeah, that, that part aged well. Fuck that guy. Hell yeah. Fuck that guy. Yeah, but but him being protective of her for no right. reason. He doesn't have to be. But he's like, no, actually, I'm, I'm going to do something good here. And, and fuck a, little, this guy uh, a little smart screenplay it's move, like, If anyone's going to fuck my daughter, it's me. A little Gross. smart screenplay move, too, is just to like give her that knife, which you know is like going to be used later as well. I didn't yep. see it coming like, at all. It's it was awesome. awesome. Yeah. It was so good. It's true. It, he gives, you know, she, he gives her the advice that it's like the raw advice of uh, like that a, a parent probably doesn't want to give to their kids, right? Of... Yeah, there's pieces of shit out there. And the way that you're dressing invites people into your fucking into your fucking pants. And the way that you're acting right now, like it's not you're, consent, you're but out, it invites them. It's like yeah, it's like it's like <laughs> you're setting yourself up for for this this failure of and you're number one, you're also just hanging out with a piece of shit. Yeah. Yes. That's also the other thing. Which is okay. Just have this knife. Just have this case. knife. It's like because you know what? People are shitty. So you should have this knife and you should be able to protect yourself. Yep. It's like Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, kind of. I mean, yep. kind of, yeah. And but it's so. weird too because, like, it was almost like Sean Archer, the character himself, wasn't there enough, obviously, to like teach his daughter of any of right. these things, which is why though, she's rebelling. Yeah, even though he knows a bunch of self defense shit and everything. But then, like, Caster Troy as Sean Archer is catching him up, catching his duties as a father up for him. Yeah. But then Sean Archer himself as Caster Troy is learning these things, learning to be a, like kind of a harder man as Caster Troy in this den of yeah. pieces of shit. Thieves, you know? yeah. It's really weird. It's pretty awesome, man. And then you get this like this just uh, massive shootout at this warehouse <laughs> yeah, where where it's like kind of kind of awesome and artsy at points. Like you've got the kid wearing the headphones, listening to uh, whatever. Uh, what uh, song? Was Somewhere, Somewhere Over the, the Rainbow, Rainbow. Mm-hmm. in slow motion while like we don't even see who's firing what and who's doing what. All we just see is bullets and things and breaking, and it's just all in slow motion. It's like I, think, I should hate this. I think that was like, all John Woo, of course. Oh, yeah. Like in the in a kind of spur of the moment, it was just awesome. Like I didn't hate any of it. Normally, yeah. this is me going. F- 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 kid would totally hear the bullets through the headphones. Yeah, like, yeah. I didn't even care. Well, it was awesome, guys. Can I ask? Can we can we just get a layer? Of it, that exists in some warehouse, a warehouse layer for podcasting. Please. And that we have just like weird, crazy furniture couches. There's and bedrooms in case you want to spend bedroom. the night. Yeah. And like, you know, there's probably a fridge that, you know, has snackies in it that yeah. we can just be like, ooh, snacks. And we can have popcorn. Many and, of them come to mind. And, and then there's another a smaller, much smaller fridge that just has Coke in it. Yeah. yeah. That you're just like, oh, let's do some Woo. Coke. And, and then the kind where you mix it in your drink? Yeah. yeah that kind. Yeah. 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 Come on. It's a whole different kind. Like, Coke aid. Yeah. <laughs> Coke aid. Yes. Indeed. Um, <laughs> Gator Coke. <laughs> <laughs> but will the many come like the crow? That that whole fa- bad mm-hmm. people factory. Uh the Foot Clan obviously is the most famous one. It's I the know. most it's the best one. We just need this one. There, I'm sure there's one in Blade. Like they're just they, they have it's the more of an fun. LA thing. We need a warehouse. The mostly in out. LA. Yeah. yeah. This is what we do. <laughs> do, 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 do. There you go. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Foot Clan. Uh, can I ask you a question? Dietrich is Baldy McBalderson, right? Yes. yes yeah, he's I, I, uh, Mr. Clean. Yes. I very much like his face. Off? I, I, I actually didn't like him at first, but I like him in this in these scenes. Now, Dietrich is Sasha's brother. I know where you're going. Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then they just like make out? Yeah. And and what I read was that it was their idea. They're like, hey, j- hey, um, Mr. Wu, um, what if what if we made out as I was dying? He's like, well, you're brother and sister. And, and they're like, yeah, I know, I know, I know. I just think it just shows like kind of, kind of how, how crazy we are. And Mr. Wu was like, sounds good. Do it. And then they all just said, let's that's yeah. fine. Go ahead and do it. So you're going to sort of weird, guys. So you're going to make out. 
it's with like your sister. It's, yeah, we're gonna do a makeout scene. No, you guys are brother and sister. That wouldn't make any. S- <laughs> Wait a second. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. I see where you're going yeah. with this. Yeah, <laughs> that would be kind of crazy. <laughs> crazy, right? Let's fucking do it. Okay. Huh? Okay. I've always wanted to make out with my sister. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> what? I, I, I just, but I just, whatever. They, like, they I, do. I, I miss the fact that they were brother and sister, and then they made out. I'm like, oh wait, they're brother and sister. And then, and you kind of think about it, and you're like, you know, even that kiss seems like they're brother and sister. It's not like you it's know, not like <laughs> like kissing your mom or something. Like when you're younger, <laughs> all right. When you're younger, yeah. When you're you different know, time, just like you know, a little pet, a little peck, not like. <laughs> Yeah. I need the I need the cut of like Sasha and Dietrich going in to kiss and then and then Lorraine pulling away going, when I kiss you, it's like I'm kissing my, my brother. brother. <laughs> or or cut to the demon in Little Nicky going, gross. gross. <laughs> cool. No, that's after that. Yeah. Do it all together. I want it all. Thank you so uh, much. The, this I think the scene of this movie, the the almost as if this was what he thought of first and then built a movie sure. around it. It was the mirror face off. Yeah. Th- this this is like mind blowing to me when you really stop and think about it that they are they are looking at each other in the mirror, knowing that they're fighting their enemy, but now they're actually able to see their enemy because they're looking at themselves with the other person's face off. It's like it's, and they're facing off. And they're facing off. It's like it's like really, really cool in it's, a deep down awesome way. I love it. It is almost it's it's sorry guys. It's too deep for what this movie is. <laughs> but it doesn't have to be you, know, you don't look at it that way. No, I well, too bad because <laughs> I'm looking at it in the mirror. Uh that's what it is. Like it is. Like they're they're the way you guys are kind of talking about this, this is why I love talking about these movies on the show because they are they the movies are so much deeper than most people are going to get off the surface of watching this like one to two maybe even three times and i do think that that is very brilliant actually like i think it's a very brilliant thing but in the end you're just talking about 90 a 90s <laughs> seven movie action movie where they don't have to reload their guns. You know what that's I mean? That's the thing. Like and that's it's brilliant, but it's and it's a vehicle, I'm, you know. I'm not saying this is Donnie Darko. I know. I'm saying that this is really fun. That you're right. But you're injecting something like this to make people think if you want. You right. Know? If you if, want if, to. if you want to take something out of this that isn't just like you say, unlimited ammo no matter what nineties action. You can take something out of it, but if not, then it's still unlimited ammo. Nineties action, you know. Yeah, it's the it's the best of both worlds. And like even in just like one shot, it's really cheesy. Like it's pretty cheesy. Yeah. That whole kind of concept is like obviously I get what you're going for, but it works. It completely it works does so it does. well. I mean, like, and then they like literally kill each other. <laughs> right. Each other's reflections. Yes. And then it's real. I uh, I I agree with you. I do and. I think the the big thing that I like about watching Travolta act like Cage and Cage act like Travolta is when they do have these almost emotional moments. The the Cage doing the emotional Travolta, oh, oh, that kind of thing. It's like you can see when he's really getting into it and stuff. Those are the moments that it it makes me really, really think hard about this movie in the same sense of the mirror trick, right? Yeah. It, those are the moments that make me really think about it and how, and and again, taking it to a deeper level, the the internal conflict that each of the characters have trying to be the other, per, the other person, their arch nemesis, and having to go through their own, their trials and tribulations that they go through, it's Castor Troy's son, right? Yeah. It's the gr- a girl that he fell in love with, right? Not trying, you know, and that moment even afterwards, it's like no matter what happens, Sean Archer is done harassing you, basically, right? That's like, a pretty cool Done statement. chasing yeah. you. No matter what happens, he's done doing that to you. That's the kind of stuff that, that you can take it a, a, a little bit deeper. Maybe that's what makes these movies so good to a degree is you can take it as deep as you want or you can just live on the surface and watch people yep. not reload and their guns. Just yep. pound and just, popcorn in your face yeah, and, and just, just let it happen. 
Exactly. It, no, you're right. I mean, like he's finding out that Caster Choi is not so different from him other than being a fucking psychotic bastard. Correct. You know, yeah. and killing people. And he's got that kid, you know, and even the shots of him like carrying the kid around. I'm like, well, kids don't really do well on your arms. So maybe put him down, <laughs> maybe put it down <laughs> but, while uh, you're in the middle of a firefight. Yeah, this happened before, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But no, it is. That is an interesting thing where it's it, this movie didn't have to do any of that. But John Woo's the the fucking man. Yeah, <laughs> he just is. Uh, is this? Are we at the point where um, where this it, has Troy or uh, uh, Sean Archer as Troy revealed himself to his wife? Well, then? That that's the end of the scene. So let's let's go there. Okay, so that's where I was wanting to go here. It was, and they're in the hospital. It's like we've done things that man and a wife to do, and you're just like, uh, yeah. he's like, I'm sorry, I put you in that position. I have never meant to put you in the position. To get banged by the guy <laughs> who killed, who killed your son, son and wants to kill your husband. And he it's just, I'm sorry. But it's he's like, actually me. It's actually yeah. me. And now you have to be sympathetic to the face of the person that killed your husband <laughs> or killed, killed your son. You're just like, you... Like the deeper levels of how psychotic it is that you chose to become this man for even three minutes... Yes. Is now really coming to a head, bro. I really let that coming guy to a head. Fuck me. Yeah. <laughs> His cock was way bigger. Well, I was, no, wondering it was the same dick. <laughs> I was wondering no, if you were not. Wait. No. Oh, no. No, just face off, dude. Oh, no that, dick yeah. off. Well, <laughs> <and> then, <laughs> <laughs> there it is. How do we do it? How do we do it? <laughs> That's the porn title. That's a dick off. That's dick when off. they swap dicks. And they like, swap dicks. That is a porn. We could, and it's like, it's like the, no one will ever know below the belt. <laughs> it's like, it, it's like I'm cheating, you've but seen, not. You've seen face off. Now watch dick off. No shots below the belt. That's the tagline. Or shots below the belt. Shots below the belt. Yeah. <laughs> Allowed. Uh, oh, man. Dick off. You're right. It is. It was a different, it was a different piece. Wouldn't that have been the giveaway? Wouldn't it? it should have, a lot like, of things you, would have been the you giveaway. You got a birthmark down there. You're a little yeah. crooked oh, one way. Like maybe you took blue chew that day. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, too, like they they the wipes. Remember they said they cut off his scar. Um, yeah. So that they could save it, so they could put it back on him later. Yeah. Um, they Some did real not gold put. They shit. didn't put the scar back like onto Archer's body they, with Caster Troy. They took that scar and made it a foreskin, <laughs> right? To make it oh, because one was circumcised and one it wasn't. Feels a little different. What if that was? It what was if that was one t- last thing that <laughs> what the if guy Caster Troy was circumcised, but Archer wasn't, <laughs> and then they, they went to have sex the first time. She's like, <gasps> "You got a hood." <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. What's under the hood? I see. Caster Troy definitely had STDs. So now there's gonna be a, <laughs> oh, there's gonna no. be a lot of, there's gonna be a lot of weird conversations when this movie's yeah, over. Yeah. We'll get we'll get to that. There's a lot of different peaches that he saw throughout wow. his life. We don't like that. We don't like that. Final scene, boys. As the at the ceremony, a gunfight ensues. Troy's archer uh-uh. f- flees the church. <laughs> With Archer as Troy pursuing him, a boat chase <laughs> ensues, ending in a collision on shore. Oh. Backup agents arrive and address Archer as Troy. As Archer, <laughs> done, having been, this is the worst summary of all the movies. Yeah, having you, been keep con- going, it's great. convinced by Eve of Archer's true identity after the face transplant surgery is reversed, Archer returns home where he adopts Adam into his family, keeping his promise to Sasha. Did you guys see Louis Carruthers from American Psycho get shot in the head? Uh uh-uh. uh. By, he's, uh, the kind of um, well, oh yes, the yes. red the red hair in American Psycho. Yeah, yes. where did you get that overnight bag? <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's the guy who just blew blew his fucking head off after yeah. the whole shootout. Nice the thing. Uh, yeah, I did. I did recognize him. I was like, oh, that guy's gonna get killed. <laughs> he's he. He he barely lasted through American Psycho. He's gonna die here. Yeah. Like that's just the way it's gonna go for him. <laughs> now, the, I, the, the, oh, I think this overnight is the be- bag to body bag. Sorry, I think this is the best Travolta acting as Cage moment when he goes, "Wee, what a predicament!" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that that little gun like standoff thing is really funny. Oh yeah, like if Family Guy ever parodied, parodied this, it would go on forever. Like, uh, what about a brother? Oh, yeah. What about a sister? What about a cousin? Yeah. What about a nephew? What? And like, everybody just keeps coming in with different guns. Like, what about a roommate? It's like, <laughs> what about a dog? <laughs> there's like, there's so many little elements to to this th- at this point. And watching watching Travolta sometimes be the crazy Nicolas Cage comes off very Jim Carrey. Oh yeah, sure. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, ooh, 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 
it, it, like especially when he says he's uh, he says turn turnover we uh, now we've got the ball like that kind of thing uh, about the bomb. You ready for ready for this? What if what if two two people that could have done this that like I'm thinking polar opposites? <laughs> Jim Carrey, Matthew Broderick. Oh, think God. like cable guy, <laughs> but yeah. think about them having to swap and act as each other. Uh, Matthew, oh. Bro- like Matthew Broderick couldn't pull off a Jim Carrey, but it'd be fun to watch. But it'd be so great to watch him try. Oh, that'd be great. Yep, uh, just throwing it out there. That's kind of fun. So the the uh, the uh, not so predictable moment that you did mention was uh, not that another gunfight ensues, but a boat chase ensues. You could have ended. You could have ended at this gunfight in yeah. the church. You could have. I mean, the doves everywhere. You could have really made this the moment. We have fifteen million more dollars. What well, we could spend that on, like marketing or Let's something. Let's get these smoke boats, smoker boats. <gasps> Good idea. Two yeah, of them. Cigarette boats. Two of them. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get two of these like cigarette boats and this like let's just drive them around. Oh, and we got a little extra to buy like a police boat or something. Like, oh we, yeah. We could blow that up, I think. Yeah. Oh, we gotta blow something up. Oh yeah. That's Everybody 100%. knows when boats, when like fiberglass shells of boats collide, it's explosions. Yes. Yeah. Everybody yes. knows. That. Every time. You've been yep. to Lake Okaboji? That happens. It happens all the time. Yeah. Come on. Um, <laughs> Boji? I'm not happens. even I'm not even mad. I'm literally watching this boat chase still ready to roll still going hey they're not even trying with these stunt doubles like they're not even attempting to make them look like the guys that we're no. interested in and i don't care no no it's it's like it's like the movie's face off he's not playing himself anyways it's like just get some guy to just do the <laughs> fucking stunt doesn't <laughs> fucking matter turns out the face came up yeah, yeah it turns i was out. actually hoping that like he would have skidded across the water and his fit the face would have come out and they would have like <laughs> we got to just like it. some sort of mrs doubtfire <laughs> yes. effect just like gets right up oh, we got oh, my face <laughs> and then another boat's coming they're like no <laughs> <laughs> I just I, they they had so I many need opportunities. A new face. There. Come on in. Come on in. <laughs> oh, honey. <laughs> I got to I I think uh after all this, right? Finally, oh my goodness. Finally it's done. The, uh, the cutting, the cutting, the face cutting. Awesome. Yeah. Face cutting was pretty pretty wild. It's um, a great I love that's a diabolical thought. I was like, that don't do has. that. Don't do that. Ah. Yeah, cuz he's literally like I'm going to die and you're not going to have my face back. Yeah. Yeah, like that's awesome. Certainly a heat of the moment decision though because does he not realize that the face transplants that they did like there's no scarring? Ah, that's very true. I mean, they're just going to run that little laser gun There's over not even his. a seam. They're yeah. not even just like a slight scar. It's they're like, like a, no, we're good at that. It's like a tattoo removal gun on steroids. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, they'll, those oh, don't worry about those little guys. They'll be fine. Oh, those that little guy. We'll chicks dig scars. Guys. Chicks get they yeah. do. Yeah. Oh, well, my wife really doesn't though. So, can we not Well, I got rid of the one. Well, I think the scarring on your face is going to be the least of her problems because you not only made her like bang the arch nemesis of of your family, um, you know you they definitely like just did it like several times over and came really, on to the daughter really Ooh. weird places, um, you know, and then came on to your daughter and like wanted to you know tr- try to make that a weird thing, but then by the way, you also are trying to convince her to um, you know just forget about all that and then adopt the son of the guy. Who killed your son to replace him? And that should be fine. So you're worried about your scars? What about my internal scars? Yeah, yeah. How about the scars of everyone around you? How about yeah. the scars of this kid, this kid. Adam? This yeah. kid, this whole family. I need a, I need a face off too, and it's literally just how fucked up they are oh, for the Mike, rest Mike, of them. It's just married AJ, with children. Mike, it's okay because. <laughs> oh, sorry. You're right. You're right. <laughs> It's okay. Sorry. It you makes Sorry. everything okay. <laughs> just wipes away. <laughs> Trauma gone. That's it, you don't like, see it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. You don't see the you don't see the traumatic experience. You're this living with not, me now, this, Troy. <laughs> you're gonna come live with me now, Adam. <laughs> by and, the way, and by the way, your name's Michael now. So you just yeah. better get used to that. Michael. This, Michael. This kid this little kid's so fucked up. Oh yeah. Now. He's wrong. Oh, Everything yeah. he's gone through and now to they're gonna treat they're gonna pretend like he's Michael. It's fitting his name is Michael. Because he's gonna be on a killing rampage oh, yeah, yeah, as correct. soon as he grows up. Oh mm. fantastic. Yikes. The daughter the daughter totally fucked up from this whole experience she she essentially almost killed a guy yeah. with a with the butterfly knife yeah yeah um dude uh th- uh the wife <laughs> oh they're she, never having she, sex again when she finds her stds that she got from caster troy this this is not going to go well uh i do really wish i think a funny way to end this would have been for them to be like 
your dad's coming home from his face surgery today. We're so excited. We're so excited. And they're like, everybody's dressed up. They're standing. They're like, wait for him. Here he comes. And if he would have walked in and it would have just been like, Fuck just up. like gnarly it, because they're like they're like what do you want like dude we the one guy that knew how to do this like he's dead looking like Willem Dafoe and poor <laughs> dude, things dude, no no, yeah. no no Tom Cruise and Vanilla Sky I oh, want yeah, I want that face on him and he's like and they're like no it's uh, yeah it's no see that's what it would be but it'd be him coming around the corner like all slow and by the way he looked like he couldn't use, like move his face anyways John Travolta coming in it's like I can't talk because of Botox and shit. <laughs> uh, I get to wear it in like a pair of shoes. He's got like a little like funny like uh, like like Halloween mask that looks like Caster Troy, and they're like, <laughs> "Oh my god!" It's like, "No, I'm just kidding." It's like, and then it's just a shit fest all over. Well, there underneath. was there was an alternate. See, it could have been bad. It could have. There was an alternate ending where he's just like at, at the at his like sink, and he looks in the mirror, and it's Caster Troy. Yeah. And then he looks to his wife, and he looks back in the mirror, and it's. Yeah, like, it's like he's going crazy. Yep. or like he kept Caster Troy with him. Really? Yeah. Cool. Whatever. <sighs> yeah, I mean, this like this is actually honestly more disturbing. <laughs> the, the, the way Adam. that they're just like everything's fine. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> let's 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 adopt Caster Troy's. You know, the serial killer guy, the 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 terrorist guy. I- Let's adra- adopt his his son. I don't think that's how it works. Too. I don't think you can just be like, hey, we're going to take this kid. They're like, oh, that's fine. Yeah. And I don't think that's how that works. I don't think that's how it works, guys. Oh, you're yeah. going to pay for him. Sick. Sick. Ah, sick. Go ahead. You're going to pay for him. <laughs> oh, sick. We didn't want him anyway. He's kind of a weirdo. Well, he, <laughs> he's been kicked out of his last seven foster homes. He's so. cutting the heads off of rats. It's really weird. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, boys, While listening watch. to Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Thank you. Yes. Do you have anything else you want to talk about on Face Off? That's it. We have stripped away the nostalgia, talked about it with a modern day eye. We got to give it a modern day rating. Sean, what do you think about this movie? This movie's just too much fun, man. I, I can watch this movie anytime. I got to be honest, though. I think it might be a little long. Yep. I can't really see a place to trim the fat, Agreed. though. Um, yeah, it, they put it back on John, John Travolta's yeah, character. Yeah, he got his even. love they, handles. That's yeah. the place. Uh, oh, we'll put those back. Can you not? Okay. <laughs> I don't want those. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that new weight I like loss this new pill circumcision. Yeah, it's like, man, this is it's like a whole new me. Thanks for giving me my hood back, fellas. Papa's got a brand new hood. And bag. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but, man, like... Uh. You, this is a perfect movie to watch. Like those, like Mike and Karen, or uh, what was it? Someone and Karen. Oh, Steve and Karen. Steve and Karen said, This is a perfect, like, Saturday night watch. Put it on, get some junk food, get some beers, get some uh, candy, get, get whatever, or just get a bunch of friends together and have a fucking blast because it is just a blast. Uh, it's, it's like the movie I think about when I think about popcorn movies, when I'm just like, I want to go to a theater. I, I wish they would make movies like this yep. nowadays. There's, I, I like Gerard Butler is maybe the only one kind of doing it now. Uh, he'll come out with a movie and, and it's, you know, it's a gamble. I'll go and watch it. I want it to be like this. But, um, <sighs> oh God, what do I compare this to? I don't even know. You compare it to The Rock, Gone with 60 sec- Gone in 60 Seconds. Uh, last action hero. That is exactly. Those are the ones you're compared it to. What did I give exactly Con Air? Oh, you guys, you're supposed to do this ahead of time. I know. What Con did Air. I give Con Sean, Air? Sean, you gave Con Air an 8.2. 8.2. 8.2. 8.2. 8.2. 8.2. 8.2. 8.2. 8.2. 8.2. 8.2. 8.2. 8.2. 8.2. 8.2. 8.2. 8.2. 8.2. 8.2. 8
is the idea that we're just going to be okay with all the crap that transpired in this family. Like we finished the, the, this up with, I don't know. It's, it's really hard. I have a tough time getting past that. Um, and being somewhat overly critical to be completely honest. I, I do think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give this movie. I did a 5.5 beforehand. I'm going to give this, it's better than that. I, I will say it's better than that. I'm going to give this, it's not better than dual. I'm going to give this a six point. This is going to be, you know, this is going to be my only 6.5 that I've given out. 6.5 for age. What I really like about this movie is that the movie is just like the plot of this, where it's pretending to be something else. And it knows that this is a bad movie pretending to take itself seriously but knowing how bad it is. Brilliant. There you go. And and that is why it does not come off stupid. It knows it's bad, but it wants you to be like, no, this, this is awesome, right? Mm. But also knowing that like it's bad. Look, like, boat chase. This is fucking stupid, but it's awesome. And, <laughs> and that's what they're doing in the movie. The, the guys, they're like, I'm this person, but I'm pretending to be this person, pretending to be this person. And it's cool. It's, it's definitely, it's not the best action movie we've done, but it's the best like, like, not serious action movie we've done. I, I'm a 7.75 Hell on this yeah. one. So that takes us to a 7.48 as a group. Pretty high for the old boy there in face off. 7.48 is going to tie it in the 70th spot with Fast Times at Ridgemont High. That's going to be slightly lower than Mighty Ducks, Tommy Boy, Young Guns, slightly better than Big Trouble and Little China, Armageddon, and The Fifth Element. Ooh. Better than the fifth. Yep. Wow. Yeah, that's your uh, fault, AJ. That's no, actually, fault. that's not your fault. That's me and Sean's <laughs> fault. But <laughs> yeah, fuck you guys. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for being here. Next week is our final movie of episode May, of all time. <laughs> May of Sways Uncaged. We're doing National Treasure. And then we are jumping into the month of June with Men in Black. Oh, boy. And if you're new to this podcast, go back this time last year, Con Air. Perfect timing. Oh, yeah. Perfect timing, boys. Wonder how we line that one up, guys. Well, go on back. You'll find out. Do you need me to say it? Perfect double feature. Oh, I just will. You might be right there. Uh, guys, thank you so much for listening to the show. Thank you for watching the show on YouTube. Check us out. This might be the last time you see us in this studio. Who knows? Oh, I don't know. Uh, thank Not you. Even close. You're right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so thank you for uh, leaving a review because I know you left us a review while you were doing that. You also hit that subscribe button. Subscribe wherever, whatever platform you are listening on. And by all means, guys, uh, find us on social media at Confused Breakfast. Just search for Confused Breakfast on any social media. You'll get us. Confusedbreakfast.com as well to see the merch that we have. You can get some shirts, koozies. You can get some stickers. You can get some plaster cuts of our faces. You can get some... Uh, you can get some of that. Go to confusedbreakfast.com as well to see the ratings of the movies that we have done. You can see AJ's ratings. You can see Mike's ratings. You can see my ratings. And you can see the show's ratings overall. Compare them to yours. I love you. Goodbye. Produced by our boy Logan here at uploadmediagroup.com. Learn more. And if you want to know who's playing music in the background, that's Shit McBurger and his acoustic duo. And they're they're playing below us. And that's why we're moving studios. It's Hobie Days. Anyway. Hobie Days here in CR. <laughs> and you want to learn more about our host, it is cloud10.fm. Go check them out. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Wait. Keep rolling. Keep rolling. And as we say goodbye to Nicolas Cage on this episode. For just one day. Fare thee well. Mm-hmm.